Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Maximum Driftcast, the only podcast where Corey is not present. But today we have a very special guest. His name, Drift Idiot. Hey. Oh, you got, you're doing a bit. You got the sound effects even. You make that's, it. That's, the, that's the audience like happy for you being in the show. You make it a joke because I haven't been here in three weeks. Yeah. Yeah, I do feel like a guest on our own show because uh, I've been touring rural America and going to every Snap-on factory in the U.S. How many are there? Uh, I, I, don't, I think this is all of them. I think we went to seven of them. One in L.A., most of them in the quote-unquote rust belt. And I saw how all the tools are made and we're uh, going to make some sure. sweet videos. You're saying there's seven Snap-on factories. Yeah, so wow. uh, there's... I don't want to get into it because you're going to see. Yeah. You're going to see all about all them right. in the coming months. But uh, yeah, we're going to make some cool don't videos. Spoil it. I won't. I don't want to get fired. Oh, yeah. What uh, I, I've heard that you guys have been making podcasts, although one was not made last week. And I'm sure... One, one podcast I, I and the fans, I'm sure, are very upset. Yeah. But we're back without Corey. With, I mean, because it obviously, you know, we can't be back all together. <laughs> it's impossible for us <laughs> to be together, but it's obviously a busy time of year for Corey and Street Standard. So I think he's off doing some sales stuff or uh, maybe he uh, actually, I think he got a lead on a good used hot dog in the uh, California state. Mm -hmm. And he's following that up. He's Although I am not sure that if I were to open up Origin on the computer, if I saw Corey's name playing uh, WoW, I would be... Dude, it's, it's not Origin, excuse me, Battle.net. Sorry, I, I got my nerd, my nerd sites mixed up. If Corey might be on World of Warcraft, and if he is... I've been know, getting a lot, of not, uh, a lot of emails saying uh, Twitch. Yeah, Hosford Corey's... Is, being, is, is uh, streaming right now. It's like, oh, he's pretty busy. Yeah, so if you guys <laughs> want to check out Corey, we're going to give him a shameless plug here. I think he's, uh, he's starting to do some Twitch streaming he's a, he's of his a wow. If you, if you can't get enough of Corey on this show, you can, you can check him out on the World of Warcraft. He's, um, a he's a huge actually, nerd. He's a huge nerd. It's actually kind of funny to follow because he doesn't really take the game very seriously. Yeah, it's, it's people, most like anything. Does he Leroy Jenkins it? Um, I think. It, I mean, something similar. Not sure if it's exactly. But he, you know, what Leroy Jenkins? Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. About, right? But he's kind of like his own little little Leroy Jenkins character himself. He did a little bit of of twitching when we used to be roommates and. Needless to say, it was pretty hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, check him out. I don't. I, I think he's. Uh, he's I think he's Hosworth. Hosworth or Hosworth. What uh? What have you been doing? Uh, well, I've been having my parents visiting. Oh. Yeah, they've been here for like a week already, and they're gonna be here until like New Year's. Oh, okay. So I've been a good boy. Uh, haven't done much driving, but I got my Aztec back. Where Where was your Aztec? Uh, my friend uh, was borrowing it, and he. He had it for like quite some months, and I just got it back yesterday, and I'm I feel like a complete man now. You again look like a complete man. I was gonna say like you're glowing. You uh, look like you sell drugs. Radiant, radiant with methamphetamines. Mm -hmm. For people who don't know, my my plate, my license plate is Walter White. Like a yeah. like a how you say a short version of w w Walter Walter Wood. Yeah. Which, uh, for it's weird to think that Breaking Bad is so many years old now, but yep. there was a famous Pontiac Aztec on the show, Breaking Bad. This is Movie Facts yep. with Sam and Paco. Welcome. Hey. Really struggling for stuff on this off-season here. I think there's probably nothing to talk about, right? There's no yep. drifting. We should probably just like yeah, finish the show and go home. No one has built anything cool for a while. Um, there's been pretty much no updates from anyone involved in drifting or any cool videos or no crazy news no crazy news um oh oh uh i got a new camera uh oh should That's, we should we show it mm, it's over there i don't know if you can grab it i can i uh fulfilled a, a lifelong dream and goal of mine and i uh i now have a red camera oh my god this shit's heavy as hell yeah yeah, I got a very expensive camera. It's a, it's a thing that I've always wanted, and now I have it. And I'm going to be paying for it for a very long time. So, yeah, hire me. How, I don't how, have any time. How does it feel to be owned by a large corporate? I am owned by a camera at this point now, and it's weird to have... It's, this thing is insane. It's, it's like, a, like a warhead container... I don't know, it's got it's like its own <laughs> vents. And it, yeah, it's yep. got lots of vents. It's, uh, so you know it's good. It's got vents. It's got lens. It's got a uh, battery. It's got it all. It has it all. But yeah, this is uh, the type of camera that if you see a really cool video, um, it's it's uh, likely shot on this or something equally as expensive or awesome. 
uh, if it looks really good. It's, it's kind of the industry standard. And uh, yeah, I had to wait like a year. And wow. now I got it. And I'm scared to use it. I'm scared to travel with it. Pretty much just scared. It's, it's pretty much like a small size Hyundai, brand new Hyundai. Well, you're, you're pretty much holding the price of a Hyundai in your hands. Yep. That's actually their slogan is a Hyundai in your hands. It's a Hyundai in your hands. And uh, I'm happy to report that so far in my video testing in the 48 hours I've had it, I've uh, taken a lot of slow-mo videos of my cats as well as uh, a slow-mo video of me pouring beer all over my face. I can't wait to see that. It's actually on the internet. It's private right now. Maybe I'll release oh. it. Paco says I should release I it. Sh- you totally should. Because uh, disclaimer, I actually just saw it. And then, and then it's probably going to be more popular than any fucking drift video I've ever made. Well, as, as we all know, cat videos are what the internet's made of. So yeah. this will be your contribution to the internet. And you'll probably become a cat idiot from now on. Well, if only there was some people that existed that could tell us what cool videos kind are and ab- how to actually about, make about videos and how to make cool videos because cool obviously mine aren't <laughs> drift videos well when's the last time you actually made a video like a like a sam video well a sam video it's been a very long time yeah. but i made all of von gittin's videos and i was i was i was on the tanner faust shoot and i was on uh von gittin's thanksgiving shoot so why don't you watch your mouth bud and I actually have a shoot tomorrow with uh i can't say anything about it but it's Uh-oh. gonna be car related yeah, and it has nothing to do with any sort of motorsports. Wow. And uh, it's going to be a big deal in the long run, for me at least. But Re- anyways. Rest in peace, Drift Idiot. Yep, yep. Good night, <laughs> sweet prince. I'm doing <laughs> shit that no one cares about it now. It was a nice long run. But yeah. I guess since there's no one to tell us about videos, we're just going to shut the show down. Yeah, well. It's been real. Uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks, good, for, thanks good, for hanging. Good night. Oh, oh great. Okay. What's so... Going on? Oh, so I guess, I guess, well, I'll see who this is. Hello. Hello. Oh. <clears throat> How's oh, it sound? Okay. It sounds great. Uh, who is this? We were just about to end the show because we couldn't get anyone to call and tell us advice about how to make good YouTube videos. <laughs> well, I'm not trying to give that out. I'm trying to build a business on this. <laughs> I'm not trying to hand it out for free. Hey, and that's exactly how I ex- uh, wanted you to uh, intro to the show you you fed right into my plan <laughs> good yeah uh, who are we who are we speaking with here uh this is jacob agajanian at uh at old donut media old oh. donut media is that that sounds like a very old timey company you guys have been around since like the 20s i thought it was newer yeah, uh, the 2020s, 20, actually. Wow. Okay, so media company from the future. We're, we're getting a phone call from the future right now. Wow, it feels really good. Um, that's, that's true. What's up, Paco? How you uh, been? What's up, Jake? I've been good. How about you? Pretty good. Is the, is the boss man there also? No, he... Uh, good joke. <laughs> he heard that uh, he was going to be talking to uh, the donut media men, and he got real nervous. He got real hungry to start <laughs> and, with. And now he's making a bunch of proposals at his house to try to figure out... <laughs> how to make some more Lambo videos with y'all? I feel like I, we already made a video for Corey. That's the biggest video he's ever done. <laughs> well, is that uh, the Lamborghinis and Grandmas? Yep. Yeah, that was a. Yeah. It's actually called Gramborghinis. Gramborghinis. I mean, that, <laughs> if you didn't call it that, you messed up, right? <laughs> yeah, that All was right. a good idea. Shit, we should go back and rename that one. Well, what about two? Two two grannies, one Lambo. You get it. That sounds pretty <laughs> dirty, though. Uh, is there video? Do you have by chance a guy that helps you title videos next to you? Um, no. No. Okay. James. James <laughs> I don't know. James is supposed to be here, but he's in the other room complaining about something. Fair Not enough. Sure. That's all good. Well, thank you for uh, taking the time with us. Hopefully, uh, James can come in. James is uh, the other, I don't want to say half. He's one other aspect of the Donut Media people. And uh, for those that have somehow not heard of what you guys do, Jacob, what the frick is Donut Media? Uh, Donut Media is a uh, collective of people who want to create fun car content and uh and do it kind of in a unique way and kind of work with uh our friends who are drivers and influencers and uh create content with them for their partners and other stuff so we create a bunch of content for ourselves for our own channel which we just like to test out stuff and have uh, fun and goof around and then we create a lot of branded content that 
sometimes lives on our channel, sometimes lives on the brand's channel, or maybe another place that uh, we feel is the right place for it to be distributed. Um, but at the end of the day, we just are having fun with our friends making stupid car videos. Yeah, <laughs> and well, I mean, I wouldn't say that. Defend, on the spectrum of stupid, I would say it's less stupid than usually kind of where we sit on our spectrum. I'd say it's a little bit more serious and professional. So you just released Tripped Out, which was with uh, Ryan Turkey, Matt Power Wheels, and uh, the Latvian lover, Chris Dops, which was really yeah. rad. Before that, you guys were heavily involved in Turks. Uh, we're calling it the uh, GT4586, right? That is it. The Ferrari, the Ferrari FRS or GT86, as we're calling it. And before that, what else have you done? You got some other big ones out there, right? Um, yeah, I don't know. We just dropped a uh, evolution of the F1 steering wheel. Right. Which, that, uh, was, <clears throat> that was pretty, pretty badass, man. Yeah, that was a fun one. It was uh, kind of crazy. We had a friend. Well, we actually put out a video earlier, the evolution of the racing helmet, which was pretty cool. And um, our buddy, Darren Jack, who's a guy out of uh, Canada who has a – uh, I don't know, a company called Hall of Fame Collection that he kind of brokers and sells uh, a bunch of racing memorabilia. And so uh, he's friends with my uncle. My uncle told us about his helmet collection. Uh, and so when we were up at Montreal Formula Drift, we uh, stayed up for a couple extra days. Actually, uh, James and the jester did it because I had to go home for, for a meeting. But uh they went over to his house and filmed like 50 or so different helmets ranging from like 1930s all the way to current day and kind of pointed out the, um, you know, kind of the, the advancements and yeah. safety gear and all that. So then yeah. he told us about his buddy who had an F1 steering wheel collection and we were at uh, Formula One. We were doing a project with uh, Daniel Ricardo. Ricardo. So we were at. Yeah, old Ricardo. And um, so he was like, hey, I got this wheel collection. If you guys want to do something with it, I think it will be in Austin. And so that got us excited. So they had it on display at some VIP parties. Um, and then you just picked them all up without asking and shot two hours of video <laughs> just, with it with a GoPro on your face. Swooped in and picked them up at about midnight when the party was ending. And that's when our night started. So then we had a Airbnb. We had a a dude come set up a big psych wall, uh, some high powered lights. And yeah. we spent the night filming, uh, all these steering wheels all night long. And then going to say, did, them. Did, did you just like, when you said you sent an Airbnb, they came to you. It's not like you got into an Airbnb with 50 years of formula one championship winning wheels, right? <laughs> yeah, we had an Airbnb and then we did, uh, then we did the shoot at our Airbnb. So, so you did take a, you did take an Uber full of these steering wheels. Um, yeah, it was actually kind of funny. They put all these steering wheels, which were like super epic steering wheels, like all in in some really shitty luggage that we carried over there. (laughs) It was just all stacked on top of each other. But um, it's a pretty crazy collection to just be like lugging around. I feel like that would be like in a a museum of sorts. I guess it is, but I'm sure it's like, it's worth a lot of money. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, can you, can you put a price on like all these winning Uh, championship wheels? I don't know. I think that they actually ended up selling the collection like right afterwards for three hundred grand, which is what? pretty good. Dude, that seems Not super that cheap. expensive. Yeah, it, that's what I kind of thought, but uh, but I don't know. I think it's hard to find one person who wants all those wheels, and I think it might have been a museum or something. Okay. Not, yeah. not positive, but I yeah. I feel so like if that. it was cheaper, I would definitely put that on my living room wall. <laughs> yeah, there were some pretty epic wheels in there, yep. and uh, watching the like technology be infused into the the wheel was pretty cool because it was like nothing 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 and then insane it was like yeah you know i think it was, like, it, at, it's, yeah. it's pretty cool that you guys had a chance to capture that that evolution like that's that's like a something that's very unseen like there's usually like a car comparison but the yeah. wheel itself from going going from such a simple ring to, to suddenly, having a tiny little switch. Oh yeah, I think was it five. was it James Hunt or someone that had like intercom on the wheel? So like suddenly someone puts yeah. a button for intercom, and then and then like next year there's like six buttons, and then five years later there's forty buttons. Yep. Y- yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It was, yeah, pretty yeah, bad. No, it was like I think yeah the first electronic switch was on James Hunt's wheel um, in the early '80s, and then um, yeah, and then it just went nuts with uh you know like a million buttons but uh yeah like even the final wheel 
which was so fun to play with. There was like all these different buttons and it's like everything from like, this one's like a pokey one and this one's a slider and this one's a twirly. Like they all have like a bop it, like a bop it. It's a very advanced bop it. Like a bop it. Exactly. It was like a, it's like a $25,000 bop it that had (laughs) so many weird things to play with. Um, But yeah, like even that one, they were like, oh, you can't show this too much because it's still sort of in use, even though it's like a year old. Yeah. But yeah. like, we, we don't want you to highlight it too much. So it gives away the um, secrets. Yeah. So we didn't give away too many secrets on that. But, uh, but yeah, cool project. We did that. We like doing stuff that kind of helps. Uh, so one of our theories with Donut is that the auto industry is very exclusive and people – uh, try to kind of be, um, you know, try to keep people out based on how much knowledge they know. So if you, you go and you're, you know, trying to talk to somebody, you, you look like a noob and they kind of laugh you out. Yeah. Which is something we've actively (laughs) fought against on this show, which is that whole exclusivity and, uh, inferiority because there's, uh, the kids are always shitting on each other about who's cooler and who knows more. Yeah. And it's like, what's the point? You know, it's like, what, you know, we, we want to make a, a car community that, that's so rich and so strong and, and and that leads more sponsors back to it. So instead of trying to keep people out of it, uh, we want to invite people in. So we try to create videos that actually help educate and, and kind of help give these, you know, noobs uh, some information <laughs> so they can come and noob peasants. Yeah, learn. Yeah. It's actually kind of like our uh, – our facts of the 240 video that was edited by a really smart young noob uh, named, named Sam Naven out there. Well, I wrote um, it. I wrote it, and then my editing wasn't as cool as whoever you had edited it. Because then someone took it once over. I can't claim to edit it because the, yeah. the actual edit was much better than the one I did, which uh, which really showed me my strengths and weaknesses. Is that I can I can yeah. kind of write some 240 facts, but uh, I can't. It was good. It was good writing. It was really good writing. Was that? I, uh, I know Jester though. Was that a Jester edit? I think it was a Jester edit. I don't know. I ain't no damn done about, Jester. He's done about five hundred edits since he Jeez. started working here. Yeah. So uh, so Jester is Jesse Wood. He's shot drifting for a while for Thirsty Films. You guys picked him up. He's uh, he's one of my media buds. How many hours do you yeah. make him work a week? Like 100, 120, 150? I don't know. When does he sleep? Like, does he ever sleep? One fifty. We keep him. Yeah. Uh, we keep him loaded up with energy drinks, and uh, <laughs> he's all good. So he's so uh, good. Yeah, oh, he's lucky, dude. We we plucked him out of the media pits of Formula D, which he would have just been, uh, you know, goofing around with his buddies, taking pictures of each other <laughs> in the uh, in the media pits down there. And we we brought him onto some high level shit, and wow, uh, he's speak- really been excelling there but um you speak no. highly of uh us media guys <laughs> <laughs> but so a bunch, bunch of goofballs there just taking pictures of each other so but you have some history in fd you're not just a big shot video man honcho nowadays you spent years as would you say manager for the dudes uh yeah yeah i've managed uh i managed uh von gitten and chris forsberg and uh ryan twerk Mm -hmm. twerky turkey Mm -hmm. yeah so uh worked with those guys since about um 2007 i met them all at the end of 2006 and i did like an event for uh for a nascar driver i was working with called drift vs grip with uh casey kane and we uh i was put in contact with vaughn who helped me arrange some vehicles and we kind of hit it off and he wanted me to manage him. And then at that point, once Vaughn said he wanted to do it, uh, Turk and Forsberg were just on. They didn't really even know me, but they were like, yeah, whatever he's he's doing, we, we want to do. And that was kind of new in the sport of drifting, so I didn't interrupt. But that's, I mean, this, I feel, it's it's hard to, because full disclosure, I work I work with Jacob. I work with uh, Jacob's other partner in crime, Andy, quite often. It's hard to not sound like I'm uh, sucking on their dingers all day long, but I honestly do feel like uh, this is way before my time, but you guys helped <laughs> pioneer what what the professionalism and the content of what drifting is today. Yeah. And, and that, uh, that started yeah. then, right? No, yeah, it, it did. I mean, I think that at first, you know, I was kind of using knowledge that I had working in the NASCAR industry with a bunch of drivers there of, of kind of how to, to approach sponsors and how to take care of sponsors and, and how to show a good return to sponsors. I think that, you know, right then was kind of the, 
the era of YouTube being started and, and, you know, social media platforms being created. And my guys were always sort of on the forefront of that. And, uh, you know, before there was any, you know, video platforms, they were creating DVDs and actually Andy Lapuka from shoot first was, uh, working with them, kind of taking a page from skateboarding and creating like cool like Turks. videos on DVD. Yeah. It was before Turk, yeah, before it was Turk like, but you know, that style yeah, it was of like run and gun. Yeah. So, um, so they were doing DVDs. I actually put together the first deal ever that was somebody paying for content. And that was with this company called heavy, dot com which I, I don't know i don't think it exists anymore but is that for bbws the, um i don't know what it was for <laughs> it was like i don't know they paid us money we made a bunch of clips but really in the background uh they were funding the uh drift alliance dvd stay hungry so oh, yeah. uh we we got money from this like you know it was kind of like i don't even know what it was like it was like uh it was just some site that had videos on it and uh so we use that money to fund a dvd which seems really backwards yeah um, right if, if i look back at it but i, mean, I can actually uh, think of what the heavy logo looks like I, I don't think i've ever been to the site but i actually know for some reason what heavy looks it was like. like a sumo guy like with his arm out look like e honda or something yeah <laughs> but uh but yeah so i've been managing those guys helping them with their sponsors building their brand and and then after you know, several years, you know, it became more evident that um, content was really important to these sponsors and was able to get these guys to stand out. I mean, I give a lot of credit to what Ken Block has done with the Jim Connor series, which, um, you know, I think that sort of set the the pace of, hey, we need to create stuff that just gets shared, right. you know, tons of times. And, and that's how we're going to get our message out. So, I think uh, Ken did a good job of sort of, you know, setting the bar and, uh, yeah, and then the rest is history. So our, our co-founder at Dona is, uh, is Ben Conrad, who is the director of of Jim Conna, I think, four through eight. So mm-hmm. he did a handful of them and, and he kind of he helped those guys um, kind of make them more Hollywood. So he kind of had the experience and the knowledge of of how to shut down the Bay Bridge. Or, yeah, I was going to say, you know, 4 through 8, that's San Francisco. That's is, Was he part of L.A.? Yeah. yeah Those yeah, are my so, two favorite, I think. So San Francisco is my absolute favorite of the Jim Connors. Yeah. Sa- San Francisco just killed it. It was for yeah. sure. I think most people's favorite, it was just it was great. And they kind of, you know, it, it wasn't their fault, but they peaked then. You know, they just, set, <laughs> they just did it too big then. They probably should have held some of that for later. But uh, San Francisco was awesome. He, he did it through Dubai. Um and so a lot of cool ones. I mean, and I think that it's just a great, it, it, it helped take it to the mainstream where, you know, companies uh, put more value in, in a viral video or, yeah. or, you know, understood it. So we, we appreciate that. And I think that, you know, Ken and his whole team do a really good job of, of branding and, and, you know, putting together the full package. So, I mean, I could say that that was yeah. used as an inspiration for the drift guys uh, to, to tighten up their stuff and, and put out cool content as yeah. well. But, you know, that was, that was years ago and it's developed so much since then, you know, now we, um, now we put a lot of focus on, on kind of the data analysis of, of things. And we, we like to get really scientific and nerdy on what makes videos work and, and what doesn't work and how do we get them shared and what's the, the latest and greatest with the Facebook algorithms that change every single week. And yep, how do you right. make sure that you take advantage of it? So that's where we are now. No. Now, uh, since obviously we're in a drift podcast and <laughs> we kind of have to somehow attach all this talking to the whole drift environment, do you consider yeah. the drifting and not necessarily pro drifting, but literally like, you know, skidding a, any kind of car sideways, throwing big clouds of smoke is something that contributes into making videos like more appealing and just more impressive to watch and overall mo- more successful? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I mean, it's tough. I mean, we talk to a lot of these brands and probably our biggest fault is that too many of our videos have to do with uh, doing donuts and burnouts, you know, and and it's but it really is what makes things more exciting. I mean, it's what 
You watch it's, a regular ass BMW 3 Series commercial, and they're still drifting the entire time <laughs> on Top Gear. Yeah. All they're doing around the corner is, is drifting. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I remember seeing an old, a very old Castrol oil uh, video. It was like a commercial for high mileage vehicles. Yeah, and it had like a bunch of 70s and 80s old cars, and they're all drifting and sliding. They look amazing. Yeah. Like the oldest station wagon, it just looks looks sick. Yeah, I mean, pretty much you can't. You, you you can't show a car drifting without it being looking badass. I mean, it's just like if a car is just going around a track, you're like, okay, that's all right. And the, you know, if maybe if you see some highlights of it, like making an insane pass, but it you know it just doesn't compare. I mean, drifting is the most dynamic, visual, visceral craziness of a car and the power yeah. underneath it. And 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 I think that that is you know, what the drift guys need to rely on and, and, and be creative and make cool stuff and get their, their stuff out there because what they're doing in a car is better than every stunt driver that lives yeah. except for maybe Tanner Faust and <laughs> Sam Hubinet. But, uh, they're they're ex drifters. But As the I say, they're all drifters. <laughs> and then now you, you constantly, not constantly, you regularly hire Matt Powers because he is now full into the Hollywood stunt scene. It's great. It's yeah. like it goes to show you though that that drifting is apparently some of the most ultimate car control because all these successful drifters can now have successful careers in stunt driving. Yeah, no, it's cool. I mean, and we deal with a little bit of like traditional production Hollywood world stuff and and whatever. And and you know they sometimes you know some of these agencies try to push specific stunt guys on us or they have somebody they use and i just tell them to fuck off because <laughs> there's literally nobody who can do what forsberg and turk and vaughn and yeah. you know all these guys do i mean there's that they they're special like what the, the car control that these drifters have and to be able to put a car exactly where yeah. you want it every second is is something that's special and i don't think people give uh the drift guys enough credit you know i Absolutely. think that, that you know, running yeah. the bank at Irwindale uh, a foot away from each other is, is seriously one of the most incredible feats of automotive driving. And it happens a thousand times, uh, you know, a weekend at, at Irwindale. And, yeah. you know, nobody bats an eye, but it's some of the hardest stuff that goes down. And and that's kind of on the, on the production side of things from my perspective with many fewer years of experience like that, that always has surprised me watching the Vons and the Tanners and the Forsbergs and even oh, I hate to give it to them but even the Turks they uh <laughs> they usually on command first try uh, you know after the director Andy or anyone says hey put this car at the edge of this cliff or like let's say let's take the uh, Black Friday video we made yeah. like Chris uh yeah. you know hang your tires like an inch away off the edge of the second story rail list drop on this mall and he did it in first try I got it. yeah it's like <laughs> yeah. it's like these guys they they can put a car exactly where it needs to be and they're just they're just stupid drifters you know they, they don't, yeah. that's all they could do but they know how to yeah. uh set up these cars in crazy ways yeah no it's it's true i mean i like so i take it for granted or i i don't like appreciate the guys enough because i just i've always worked with the best in the world and i just i like expect that everybody can do what they do and uh you know occasionally we'll have some other people or not pros or whatever you know uh, at something and there's just they aren't even close to to what they do but i mean pretty much if you're in the top 16 at, at in formula d you're probably one of the most you know controlled you know you can have the best car control in the world i mean yep. it, you know and probably runs deeper than top 16 i mean those guys are all all pretty amazing drivers and they uh you know they, they i actually think that that's a little bit of a problem is that it's so specific <laughs> to drifting and drift competition is that you actually don't appreciate like how great these guys are, yeah. the, are behind the wheel of of any type of car you know but um but yeah, I mean, you know, it's funny. We took Ryan Turk because of uh, his sponsor gum out. Like they, they kind of brought up some little weird opportunities for him and they had him go run a formula Ford race, like those little open wheel cars. And, uh, you, beat you know, it wasn't asses, like, right? yeah, it wasn't like a crazy competition. You yeah. Know, I mean, it was like some legit guys in the industry and whatever. And he went and beat them all by 24 seconds. Jesus. So like, it was like a major ass whooping and yeah. you know, nobody thinks that a drifter can race well, but they actually, well, they can know where to find of, grip and where to lose it. So it's like, I think yep. when you, when you know how to tiptoe that line, that's a, that's a big deal. Real yeah, quick, without yeah, without getting on too much of a tangent, yeah. Uh, Gum out slash Black Magic 
is the new title sponsor for Formula Drift 2017. Yeah, what, it uh, is. What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> we're, uh, is it your fault? We're excited. It's somewhat of my fault. I wish it wow. was. I, I wish I could. Um, I wish I could take claim, but there's a lot of people who did it. But uh, yeah. no, I, I mean, I brought in Dumb Out to to the industry, uh, their agency, um, their their the the guy who kind of runs their motorsports agency, a uh, guy named Kenan, who's one of my really close friends, one of my Good neighbors guy. back like back. Yeah, yeah, great guy. Uh, nice. He came from the NASCAR scene. I lived next door to him when I lived in North Carolina. We've always stayed close and I've been pushing drifting on him for years and years and like, Hey, you need to bring some of these brands. So he's represented, you know, gum out is one of them. Gum out owns black magic. Uh, he has done Quaker state pins oil. If you've seen the pins oil hood on Pat Gooden's yeah. car or the, uh, pins oil stickers on Vaughn's, uh, side mirrors that that was from Kenan as well. Yeah. Well, but, it's amazing uh, to see real quick, yeah. uh, yeah. the, the small amount of money that you would invest in FD to get like a hood or a mirror versus yeah. what that would cost in another sport that is not <laughs> nearly as youthful, not nearly as great exposure. Like it's crazy to think that the, I don't, I don't want to fall too deep in this, but the amount of money that it takes to get exposure to millions of kids is, is so minor compared to what it would cost to not even have a mention in, in NASCAR or F1 or anything like that. Yeah. And I think that Kenan was kind of feeling that. And he also, you know, I, I, I pushed him on drifting for a long time. And then I think he finally came and checked it out at, at Long Beach or something and was like, yeah, there's something here. So he started, uh, you know, advising gum out to spend a few dollars here and, uh, th- they loved it. They actually really enjoyed, uh, you know, the experience. They liked the audience. They, they liked the series. They liked the way they were treated from, you know, Jim and Ryan at, at FD and, and, and Brian Olfer, you know, they, I started to get them introduced to the series and not even really to set up a series sponsorship. It actually kind of doesn't help me <laughs> that much, but I want to help the sport of drifting. And I introduced them because I just wanted a, sponsor who has been in nhra and nascar and indycar and pretty much all the all the other big series to to get to understand what makes fd so special and i think that it's still run by the same guys that that begged to get you know d1 to come do a parking lot show for them you know yeah. 12 years ago um it's 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 the community there and it's it's the audience that are actually people that work on their cars or care about how their car looks or you know change their oil or or any of that it's that's this audience and and yeah. that's what uh the endemics are starting to find so what are endemics uh, endemics are like uh, uh companies that are attached to the auto industry so gotcha. oils fluids tires whatever but um yeah so uh, we did um we did gum out as a full you know gum out was looking to step up their involvement uh, they got, uh, on Ryan's car. We worked on the deal for a little bit, did a primary sponsor. It was awesome. Um, actually this is a good thing to tell some of the listeners who might not quite understand how Turk's program ran this year <laughs> or last year. Um, gum out was the primary sponsor through their distributors, which is AutoZone, O'Reilly advanced auto parts, you know, whoever, all those auto parts stores, they passed through the rights to Turk and his car to those those uh retailers and so that's why turk's car changed colors and paint schemes yeah. so many times which was is, really cool to see by the way like it's, it's fun yeah. to see because i know that's happened in other auto sports it happens in nascar all the time and and yeah. it's fun to see it in drifting now that uh and, and matt field i think embrace that at irwindale to get gears of war and microsoft on there but yeah i think yeah, it's definitely cool. a good thing for the yeah. sport to start doing that yeah, I think it's really cool. I mean, one, I think the fans were a little bit confused. I thought Turk was just like jumping ship every other week, <laughs> yeah. but um, but it was all it was all funded by by Gum Out, and then they basically offered that as a gift to their retailers nice. for you know special promotions or or whatever it is. And uh, we would bring people out from each retailer, so they got to experience FD, yeah. which was a great thing because now we have a lot of retailers who are stoked on fd are, are interested in doing some more sponsorships and and stuff but um but yeah so i think after um you know basically a year as primary sponsor of turk's car uh gum out was really happy with the results really happy with the reach and black magic um stepped up to to come in as a title sponsor and uh 
not to not to toot our own horn, but <laughs> but something that was a little bit of a kind of just something that nudged them and got them excited was the four five eight six program. Yeah. Um, we did that uh, leading up to SEMA and kind of covered the whole build and wanted to cover a build in a new way and keep the fans completely, yep. you know, updated. And, uh, you know, by the end of it, we had over 21 million views Which before so insane. the SEMA show started. And you that's know? the primary so, reason we want to talk to you on this show, yep. uh, aside from obviously your wealth of knowledge and, and other stuff, which I want to get back to in a little bit here. But but what happened? Like, why did the GT... Like, I feel like no one that's listening to our show does not know about that. So that's a double negative. But everyone that's heard our show knows about the 4586. Because if yeah. you know anything about drift cars, if you know anything about cars, if you have liked a car thing once on Facebook, you've probably seen this Ferrari powered GT86 <laughs> yeah. FRS thing. Yeah. Like what you guys obviously didn't plan for that sort of success. Imagine when you were telling your reach numbers to Kinnon and Gum Out, it, it was much less <laughs> than you thought it was going to be. Yeah, I mean, you know, we kind of we knew that it was going to be special. It was all it was all Turk's idea. Um, he wow. Was, he wanted. He it was actually when we when we drove um, that four five eight in Canada for a Turk episode. We were driving with our buddy Damon from Daily Driven Exotics, and he he hit up Turk and said, "Hey, like I have this four five eight. I drive it like a drift car. Come up here and fuck around in it." So we went up, <laughs> and then. Turk got to drive this 458 all weekend and do all this stuff. And he was like, dude, I want a Ferrari. But obviously, <laughs> uh, yeah. Turk, Turk doesn't have the money for a Ferrari. So he convinced uh, me and Kenan and, and Gum Out and, uh, and his sponsor that it, we should do an interesting build of putting a Ferrari motor in an FRS, which he could get in our FRS. But uh, This was all born of the idea that of just Turk wanting a Ferrari, and he figured out just the best way to make it happen for his own selfish reasons. <laughs> Pretty much. It was like the poor man's version <laughs> yeah. of getting a 458 and having other people pay for it. So I mean, the, um, the poor man, it's kind of like, like an understatement, right? I, I mean, I, it's, it's still a 458 <laughs> Stradale. It's a challenge Stradale motor right yeah i mean the the motor came from like a wrecked 458 and costs more than the frs altogether yep, right. so um and the bill overall i'm sure it, it costs as much as a 458 it, yeah i actually probably <laughs> should just bought a new 458 right. but uh i don't think that many people would tune in to to watch turk start up a, a 458 that came straight from the dealership i think that um doing something that's totally different well, and absolutely. doing yeah. yeah, and 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 you know, people love engine swaps, and they, you know, this was probably one of the most wild engine swaps possible. But you know, we we knew that people would like it, but we didn't think that it was going to blow up that right. way. And and but what we really wanted to do was just to constantly create content around this, yeah. so people felt attached to the car and, and updated on it. And um, and you know, I, I think that creating, you know, it's all about like winning SEMA, you know, if it's, if it's <laughs> Ford and what they do and, yeah. you know, whoever it is, it's, it's all about like winning SEMA. And, and this was cool because we won SEMA before it started. Um, it, 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 you know, we, we opened the first day at SEMA with already 21 million people being wow. stoked on this, this thing. Yeah. And then it created a destination. You know, you go to SEMA, it's like so hectic and so crazy. You don't even know where to start. Well, we created a starting point for all everybody who was like, Hey, I gotta go see that. Go see car. that it's car. one of those ideas that like it, it pisses so people many. off because it's like, it's like how the fuck did no one think of doing this sooner? It's like, that's how you know an idea is really good when it yeah. gets done. And it is the, like one of the first time it's, it's happened and marketed. Right. Uh, and, and everyone's like, how the fuck didn't someone think of that? Cause, yeah. cause it seems simple of enough idea of, to put a crazy exotic car motor in a base Japanese tuner car. But but obviously yeah. this is the first time it's, I can't say it's the first time it's ever been done. Cause I, I can't back that up. Maybe it has been done prior, but it's not been done in a way that had the proper it's, strength it, behind it's not, it. It's not, I think it's not yeah. only, it's not only the idea because I mean, I had crazy ideas like that. Oh yeah. Paco's got the, the <laughs> dumbest car ideas you could ever hear of, but, but I, think, <laughs> I, I think know about this. <laughs> you do, but it's, I think it's a matter of who, who gets to have the idea okay, yeah. and, and make it happen because at the end of the day, that's what counts. I mean, Yo, yeah, Ferrari yeah. engine, yeah, the, they're cool, whatever. But this is shit like my grandma six. would, my, my grandma would have like yeah. shared to my Facebook. She did not, unfortunately. But this is something <laughs> that like, oh, Sam likes cars. Yeah. I, I just saw this this Ferrari Toyota. I'm gonna yeah. share it yeah. with my grandson. Like this is something <laughs> yeah. that she would have shared, shared totally. Well, yeah. it de it definitely got people pumped. I mean, it was something new. I think that uh, you know, I think uh, again, it's it was a little bit of a special circumstance, but but everything lined up right, and I think that creating content with really high style 
band and, and good taste and you know cool music and you know all the little things that we do that's kind of our ip or our signature is is pretty special i mean if you really think about it you know our facebook like we, we barely you know are, are at three hundred thousand, which is good and we're stoked on it but we've been able to sort of figure out a formula that we can consistently launch car content that gets millions of views and i think it has to do with the creative behind it and it has to do with you know how we put things out and, and who we work with to yeah. to kind of boost that up and so i think that it was just a lot of you know right things and, and a lot of the right people working on it um to do it and then you know i think trying new things doing a yeah. facebook live start nobody has done that yet you know and it's it's, Did you do uh, that with the FRS? I didn't see it, unfortunately. Yeah. But nice. Yeah. Did you miss that? that yeah. Well, we, we, we did it. Like, when we were in, in Road Atlanta, we got, like, what, like, 35 viewers? Yeah, like, sometimes yeah. we do a Facebook Live before pretty we start su- the show, like, 10, 15 people. Like, pretty it's pretty successful. It's, pretty, it's a pretty big deal. Yeah. 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 No, I think that we had, I don't remember even what it was. I, mean, I think it was, like, 30,000, like, Gee. live people, and it, like, started to really spread, and, like, it was... It was real, but wait, is that like, the start where the the engine oil gasket, or whatever, exploded and <laughs> shot oil over the rim, or is this the second start that you showed? That that was the second start. The first start was a tester start, and uh, they tested the oil tank and found out that it bur- burst at the welds and <laughs> shot was that oil live? all over somebody. Wow. Did everyone see the, that live? Oh, that, that wasn't live. They were actually kind of like priming the engine and doing some other stuff before okay. they were like going to do it live. But uh, yeah, we showed that in our wrap up video, which was pretty funny. Uh, I wasn't there that day because I was, I don't know, doing something more important or something. <laughs> but, um, sure. but, uh, but James and the jester were down there and, uh, this guy had stopped by to like see Huddy, who's like the builder. And like, he was just like a random friend who stopped in to see it. And they like cranked it over the motor, like, or the, the oil tank blew. And it just like shot all oil a hundred percent on this guy, completely covered him oh, no. head to toe That's awesome. and didn't get on anybody else. It was like nice. a perfect stream, but uh, yeah, I'm mm-hmm. sure that guy was, that was a money bummed. shot by there. Yeah. Yeah. It was a money <laughs> shot. Um, but yeah. So like, you know, doing the Facebook live, doing, you know, all those little things. And, um, you know, even up to the point, like we wanted to, uh, film a video the day before Sunday or whatever it was. I don't know that we were up in Vegas ready to film a video, but the car wasn't ready in time. Uh, last minute shit, like usual, uh, car didn't come. And we rented a four five, eight Ferrari to be a chase car. We're like, Oh, it's going to be sick. We're going to like chase the car with a four five, eight. Like it's going to be great. Well, we, they dropped it off at our hotel. The shoot was off because Turk's car wasn't ready in time. So we just had this 458 that we were were hanging out with. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, well. So we basically (laughs) used it as like a parts running car as we were trying to finish stuff up on the 4586. And we're making coffee runs and whatever. And I heard the valets that. were apprehensive to give it to you. Like the, it was dropped off at the hotel by the rental car company and the valets like yeah. took it over. And like you guys were like, all right, let's take it out. And the valets were like, well, your contract says you can't take it out until the morning, right? So yeah, the guy was being such a buzzkill. Like the, 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 the rental people who actually um, – were, were awesome i think um well, you said they knew about the build before because you called them up and they actually knew about your your gt86 build yeah pretty much everybody we called to help us with this project knew about it so it's like because i mean, I mean so, before before you continue uh, i mean yeah. i think you're also very known about doing uh, minivan burnouts oh god <laughs> yeah that, okay yeah Oh, we'll talk yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah. We'll talk about that at the very end. I think that's a good that's a good little dessert piece to Jacob here. But, yeah. but, but yeah, go on. Yeah. Continue. So yeah, so like the, the 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 guys who dropped it off when we rented the four five eight for were like, Oh dude, we've been watching that. That's awesome. Hey, we'll give you a killer deal on this. Like, you know, we'll, we'll you just have to pay whatever, the insurance and stuff. And um so they hooked it up, but then like, yeah, they dropped it off at the valet and they're like, Well, don't drive it till tomorrow and we kept being like, Well, we need to go get some gas in it or whatever, but valet like wasn't letting us take it, which was weird. And then um and then Turk drove the 4586 for the first time to do a shakedown once they fixed it that night. And, and the hood was totally latched down, right? Yeah, and they didn't latch the hood. Actually, the hood, <laughs> the latch, like, wasn't even existent. They, like, forgot about this. But these guys have been working until, so like, 4, yeah. 4 a.m. every night all week. So he drove down the street, and the hood flew off and totally got 
fucking smash. Um, so we started calling a bunch of people about finding an FRS hood and everybody was like, what, this is for the Turk build. No way. I'll give you the hood off my car. You know, like they were, <laughs> were stoked. And then we hit up 702 graphics to help us. Cause a bunch of the decals came in wrong. And so they like basically opened up their shop to us. They were awesome. I think they're, you know, they're buddies with Odie and, uh, and killed it and helped us finish it. So we're at their shop, finishing all the decals, finishing all these little things and, haven't been able to use this four five eight at all and the uh the rental people were like all right cool like we're coming to pick that thing up and we're like shit like this is such a waste we didn't do anything cool and i was like hey fuck it um i was like out trying to go get a hood at the time so i told james i'm like just drive the four five eight to the end of the street and have turk do donuts around it and whatever <laughs> and these are the five so minutes get, that you had larry chen too yeah, as well, right? this, this, this is the five minutes so i get back they're all kind of have the you know, Jesse and Larry hanging out of the back of a uh, SUV ready to take this car down. So they drive it down, do donuts around it in a cul-de-sac. It was all, you know, hundred percent shut down legally with tons of cops and for sure, for sure. you know, yeah, yeah. permits. We had permits and uh, all, all kinds of things. Form. Yep. Yep. Everybody was aware of it. Did <laughs> you some had sweet safety, donuts. ambulance crew. Everyone. Yeah, yeah. We had a helicopter on standby in case Turk messed up his donuts, yep. flew into the <laughs> creek or something. So we did those donuts around the four five eight. Uh, literally drove it back, like right down the street. The rental car guys were there, and they're like, "Okay, cool. We're gonna take this. That was pretty awesome." They they took it. Jesse cut that together and put it out, and it had three million views within an hour. That's and, so nuts. <laughs> And we were just like, holy shit, like nice. what is going on with this thing? And, um, and you know, it's so it just like, you know, everything was kind of blowing up around it, but I think we kind of overkilled it. I feel like people were like, okay, I get it. You guys have a fucking Ferrari FRS. <laughs> we're over it. But I mean, you guys didn't you know, overkill it. They're probably, they're friends. Those people did like, uh, <laughs> they, they, they got the heavy helping because every single person they knew probably shared it. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, but ultimately the whole campaign went really well and, huge reach and then and is indirectly or directly responsible for fd having a title sponsor (laughs) in 2017 it it had a little a little to do with it i I know a lot of other people worked really hard on it but it was cool to hear because black magic is a different budget and black magic is a different thing from gum out even though they have the same parent company but the marketing people on the black magic team saw what happened and and actually took the money to sponsor FD out of their broadcast budget. So they actually took it from traditional media and said, Hey, if we can get that type of hype and, and, and stuff from this audience and from, from this scene, why not take some of the money that we're going to probably blow on like some random TV commercials that nobody watches and fast forwards through anyways. And let's put it towards a series that is a leader in content creation as a leader in live stream viewers as a leader in social media and, the and demographic, let's put it there. Importantly, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of how it all, all sort of came together, but the guys at FD killed it. Um, you know, they, they treated gum out and, and all their executives really, really well all throughout the year, not really knowing that it was to lead up to a, a primary sponsor. You know, they were doing it because they, want to take care of people who, who are interested in their sport. And, um, and yeah, and it, it all came together. And I think that's going to help. Yeah. I think it's going to help FD, um, you know, just uh, have a little extra cash flow to, to make advancements in the sport. If it's technology, if it's an app, if it's, you know, more content, I, you know, I don't know how they're going to use it. I'm going to tell them that they should probably, uh, spend a lot of it with donut making cool stuff for them but uh <laughs> you know we'll we'll see how the old uh kickback train works for those <laughs> right. guys but, no but they've been awesome and we are all going to work together and, and and come up with ways that we can activate on that sponsorship in in a cool way and, and in, in a new way it's like a lot of people used to think activation was like bringing a big rig to the track and putting stuff out, out on display right. and and talking to two thousand people you know, there might be 15,000 people at the event, but, you know, how many do you really touch at like a big rig activation area? And I think where Gum Out and, and Black Magic want to change that is let's do our activation and content and reach millions of people on a, on a weekly basis. And right, we're nice. going to help them do it. 
So my next question kind of rolls into our, uh, we always do Instagram questions from our, our fans. And I know you're a busy guy, so we only have a couple audience. of them here. Yeah. Our audience, not yeah. our fans. Do we, I call we, them audience? We call them audience. Not fans. Okay. Yeah. Our audience has some questions. So this is uh, something that I'm going to roll into my next question. Because the most common thing we're ever asked on this show, and I feel like every driver, Forsberg, <laughs> gets asked this uh, five times a week. I think he has told me or whatever. But essentially the question is, how do you get sponsors as a young guy? But uh, Spunky Monkey Eleven says, "Where does amateur, where does an amateur driver looking to increase their social media presence and content start? What equipment should you invest in, and what skills do you need to develop?" So, young driver, where do you start? Because yeah. you, with your experience as the brand manager for Drift Alliance dudes for a long time, and your current job now, I think might be the most qualified person to answer this show or answer this question <laughs> we've ever had on our show. Yeah, well. Uh, uh, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's a tough question, and I get I get that a lot, and I know the guys get that a lot, uh, Chris and Ryan and, and Vaughn. They're always getting emails about it. But you know what? I mean, it comes down to being a, a super hardworking hustler, and, and those three guys, you know, they, they probably have the, the, the richest, um, you know, sponsorship portfolio of anybody, and people kind of hate on them for that. But they don't They've understand. They've worked for it. it, though. They've worked for it. They, those guys work extremely hard every single day, every single night, and they, uh, you know, they take care of their sponsors. And I think that you know you you have to you know one not be afraid to to do some free work for people. You know, get some product sponsors, put them on your car, give them a lot of love, and and hopefully it turns into something. I know that you with can't nothing give, in return as a driver, other than maybe some free product to start, right? Right. Yeah. And I think that you have to understand that. I mean, if it goes on for for five seasons and you, you rep somebody super hard and they don't give you anything, then probably give up. But for the first year or two, uh, I'd say that you really have to prove yourself that, that you're worth it. Um, I think being active on social media, um, you know, I, I think that, that it's doing it consistent, you know, consistency gains followers. I think you got to constantly be on it, constantly be sharing your experience and your journey with your, you know, fans, even if it's just 3000 people, um, you know, get them to get, get stoked on it. Uh, yeah. be creative, try to think of stuff that's never been done before. Um, you know, I'll tell you right now, you know, we're working with pretty big budgets to make some of these crazy films, but you know, the first Turk episode, uh, you know, they were priced at under $5,000 an episode and we, pulled favors and and slept on Turk's floor and fucking ate crappy food in New Hampshire and whatever it was and uh you know and and did it because Ryan wanted to create content which which yeah. really kind of helped him get all these new sponsors. I mean that content he basically made the investment of it. Nobody was making any money. Everybody was doing it to make cool stuff and yeah. uh and, you know, so I think that that's important. I think creating content, I think being active on social media, I think being extremely uh, respectful and and take care of sponsors, anybody that you can get your hands on to. And it's also, uh, you know, kind of maintain, maintaining a professional image. It's, it's yeah. you know, you don't need to have a button up shirt, you know, like, like I wear sometimes, which is really, yeah. really gets me a lot of business. <laughs> of course. But, but don't get on arguments on Facebook. Don't quit the season halfway through. Uh, yeah. Oops, yeah. oops, did I say that? Shit. Um, well, it, it's also just like understanding that um, it's bigger than you and that you have to show respect for, for the sport, the series, the fans, the, your other drivers. You know, it's, it's, yeah. it's being respectful. I think that that's a, a really key thing. I know that, um, you know, kind of, uh, you know, I don't know. I guess you don't want to look like a slob. You want to have your shit together. You want to take pride in your pit area and keep it clean and keep it together. I mean, all those are pretty basic. I don't think that I have any special knowledge. But they still knowledge. need to be said, right? I mean, because yeah. I, I don't think I haven't, I, I don't have anyone specifically to shit on. Not that I would because I'm not yeah. fucking forming the derp or speed haters, any of those guys. <laughs> but, yeah. but yeah, I mean, but I mean, if you're a new guy, I feel like uh, polish your shit up. Even if you, even if you got a turd car and a turd team, like at least pretend like you're fake it till you make it. Yeah. Fake it till yeah. You make it. I think, I think you really got to fake a team making and somebody who like, you know, somebody who I like a lot and I think has worked really hard on that is like a Nate Hamilton. He doesn't have big sponsors. He has a lot of 
great support from a family who's just, you know, down to, to help him chase his dreams, but he has good style. He has good taste. He yeah. is, is active on social media. It's like, it doesn't take somebody who has hundreds of thousands of dollars in sponsors to yeah. just do the right things and to brand yourself correctly. I mean, yeah. in most cases, you know, that's what's special about drifting is that almost all these kids have like a cool creative filmer who's their bro. And like you do stuff with them and you, right. you find somebody who can help you with some graphics or make a, a fucking, you know, little logo or, you know, whatever it is, you know, you, you get creative and you make stuff and you beg, borrow and steal until you <laughs> have big, big budgets to, yeah. to make stuff. But and that's why I've always uh, sorry to interrupt. That's why I've always expressed on the show that I was doing shit for free early on because I wouldn't be uh, talking to you at all. Cause I wouldn't know you if I didn't do free videos for Corey, that the chump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm sure a bunch of other media dudes like, like Jester and uh, other successful guys uh, and drivers share. have all done yeah. their fair share of free shit of just putting themselves out there and uh, just kind of making the coolest thing you can with zero budget that budget being your own money out of your own pocket. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good point to bring up uh, how many media people I've, I've recognized and brought out of the media pit, like Sam <laughs> over there. Hey, who was just jerking around with Corey, making one of the funniest videos, the, uh, how to, how to get sponsored by Hoonigan video or whatever it was. Which, isn't that some irony um, is the, how to get sponsored video is, uh, is kind of what has driven my career is this silly, <laughs> silly video that Corey called me up and saying like, Hey, I'm about to get sponsored. Uh, we should do a stupid fucking video. It, yeah. was self- I was, it was hilarious. <laughs> and I was like, all right, Corey's pretty much an idiot, but whoever made this is <laughs> oh, Corey's really, gonna, really good. Corey's going to yeah. love listening to this podcast. The good thing he probably won't. He probably won't listen to it. So I, miss, I miss Corey. No, I think Corey was, I think Corey was doing the right things. I know. I mean, I'm stoked to have him back in FD and chasing, yeah. you know, chasing it because he had good, uh, you know, he had a good sense of humor. But he I want to toot his horn. Promotion. He's already, he's already, he's always had a good idea of, of how to promote above his, his driving yeah. ability station and no offense to Nate Hamilton, of course, he's a very good driver, but he's always been next level promotion. So I mean that in yeah. a kind way saying that he's promoting yeah. above his skill level, which I think every no. driver needs to do. It, it doesn't matter it's, if you're winning championships, you should promote like you are, even if you're not. Yeah, no, a- absolutely. I mean, you should act like you're, you're number one. Don't, don't have an ego and don't be an asshole, but you know, treat yourself like you're a champion all the time. And, and, and pe- you know, people will see that, but, yeah. but yeah, I, I think, um, you know, all of that. I don't think there's an easy answer. I think it's bottom line, work your ass off. I, I think that people think that Ryan and, and Chris and, and Vaughn got like handed, like, uh, you know, some helicopter came and dropped a bunch of Mustangs off in, in <laughs> Vaughn's front yard. But that guy works literally yeah. harder than any other person in, in all of motorsports. Um, and, and, and really understands and actually I think enjoys the business side of it and loves going to meetings and, and getting people excited about it. And, you know, Ryan and Chris, the, you know, the same way, I think that they aren't as stoked as Vaughn is on the business side because <laughs> right. it is kind of a drag. Well, it is but, partner. They like, they like drifting yeah. above all else. And I think but, Vaughn yeah. loves drifting of course, but he also loves the game. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And, you know, I think Forsberg, there's there's literally nobody who's helped more people in drifting than Forsberg. And, and that's what he cares about is is the actual sport of drifting and and, and progressing it and helping people and, and sharing his knowledge. And that's amazing. I think Turk is probably the hardest worker in creating content. I think that he, you know, the first episodes of Turk, I mean, that was something um, I also, you know, kind of developed and created. I, you know, I met Network A, um through my last agency at Wasserman and they were looking for action sports people to pitch them on show ideas. And I pitched them on Turk and they didn't know what drifting was, but you know, through a couple of videos that we had done through blood masters, which Andy directed, um, they were like, Oh, this shit's pretty cool. And we got Turked and it wasn't a ton of money, but we, you know, Turk put all of his energy and all of his time and a lot of his own money into making stuff. And then budgets grew, got picked up. And now, you know, they're, they're looking to re-sign Turk for a fifth season nice. or something. And, <laughs> Whatever uh, number it is. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I'm over it. I'll tell you that. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's uh it's been a fun journey it's kind of what got us all together and all thinking yeah, this yeah. way and uh and has put out a ton of fun stuff like i we still have brainstorms every single day and the new people at donut and the people who haven't been around drifting that much like throw out all these ideas and it's like basically a, a south park simpsons 
reference thing where I'm like, yeah, Turk did it. Turk did it. Like we've yeah. done everything on Turk and we've yeah. done the coolest things and we did it with very little budgets. Um, really just to, to get Turk, you know, the, the attention and, and the, the promotions that he needed to get more sponsors. So nice. yeah, long winded answer. No, no, it's good. We wanted really that answer anything. No, I mean, it does. I mean, yep. I mean, it sounds, it sounds like to summarize, let's, let's summarize it in a couple lines. If you're a new guy, you're Joey drift kid and you're, you're joining pro am right now and you want to uh, make it, it's be professional, do yep. some shit for free, find someone with a camera that's work looking to tech. be a media guy and have work. him do some shit for free and work hard yeah. and keep fucking doing it until you make it. Right. I mean, yep. that seems to yeah. be the best thing. Uh, no, I well, think, yeah, I think absolutely. We have another, any other, any yeah, other cool oh, dude, questions? Yeah. We got, well, well, we're going to hit a couple quick cause I know when, uh, I know you got some, uh, um, some videos to make and all that, but uh, Paco yeah. question it. from Alika 80. Uh, he says Latvia video Latvia video is awesome best drift video I've seen in a while not counting <laughs> Sam's work oh wow, oh, wow. Anyways, oh, wow. question well, is correct, but... favorite location you've been shot uh, you've been shot you've been to shot a video and is Daniel Ricardo as cool as he is on TV yeah so wait uh, Paco's broken English. Two what, what did he ask Sam? Two part. What's the first question? <laughs> uh, first of all, is uh, Danielle Ricardo? Uh, I think Daniel Ricardo's sister is she cool? Is the question? Yes. That's one part. Okay. Super nice. No, um, Daniel. Uh, yeah, Daniel Ricardo. Seriously, one of the coolest dudes ever. Um, is is so down to earth and so chill. Uh, it, it blows my mind because. Uh, F1 I hear is pretty big and there's a lot of, a lot of fans <laughs> and a lot of money in it. And, um, when we met Daniel, uh, he seriously was like one of your bros and as a beer drinking nut and, um, is awesome. So we've actually has had, you know, a real pleasure working with him and, and have a lot more stuff in the pipeline, uh, with him. And, um, yeah, I, he is the real deal. I, I, I uh, to quote him, you know, so there's a lot. I like, I like Lewis Hamilton. I think it's cool that he's brought kind of the pop, you know, culture to F1 a little bit. And he hangs out with Jay Z and Kanye, who's a total chump. But, um, <laughs> but, you know, he does, he does a lot of stuff in pop culture. And I think that's cool in a sense, you know, for motorsports. But he's not, he doesn't seem like the most real cool dude. Down and I think, to earth. Yeah, he's not that down to earth. I think that, um, you know, I hear that he's super nice. I think Daniel put it best when he said, yeah, I really like Lewis. He's been really great to me and super nice, but he's a little bit precious. And, a little and, bit precious. Okay. And, and, and I think that, 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 you know, that's what I expected, I think, of F1 guys. And we met Daniel, and he was, like, seriously the coolest dude. So, um, yeah, no, it's been fun. He's going to be back in L.A. We're going to probably be making some stuff uh, in January with him. And, um and yeah, so he is cool, and that is all real, and uh, he's pretty funny, and he loves American culture. I think that he quotes Dumb and Dumber more than any <laughs> other person I've ever met in my life. That's but, rad. Yeah, right. yeah. And, and, uh, and just the second part of the question was, yeah. what's your favorite location you've shot at? <laughs> favorite location? Yeah, I don't know. It might be You can count all the Turk episodes, Latvia. too. <laughs> Latvia, really? Yeah. Damn. Just recently. It might be Latvia. Latvia was so cool because there was Surreal. literally no rules except for a, speeding because i heard that turk got 500 dollars in speeding tickets or something <laughs> yeah like that. i think that there are some uh s some speeding ticket cameras that exist that we didn't know about but yeah we did get like um 500 in speeding tickets which is like like ten thousand dollars in latvia Whoa. <laughs> um so uh yeah but we um I, I like those locations because they were just like kind of frozen in time. Like they didn't block up anything like the, nothing. Like you're just like allowed to walk all around. And like the first place, which was the army barracks, um, just totally dilapidated, broken glass everywhere. It's just a total mess. Like you could kill yourself at one wrong step. Yeah. Uh, and, it wasn't even like protected. It was like a park. Like you basically <laughs> could just go there yeah. and walk around. And we showed up and we're like, Hey, we're going to like drift all around this all day. And then there was like a lot of yelling in Latvian. And then the guy opened the gate and, <laughs> and that was it. And then we just okay. drifted all day. But like occasionally there would just be like a random family, like walking down the road to like explore, get their um, government funded groceries. And yeah, I don't even know what they were doing. They're just walking around, but, uh, it was just a cool spot. It was super surreal. And then the next spot was the, the missile silos, which were like crazy hangers covered in yeah. like old moss. And then, uh, like with train tracks that led to like these big holes like that, 
that big linen head was actually like yeah. a cap cap off of like a launch tube really? that like <laughs> went super deep and like yeah it was just a so so wow. weird so that was that it might crazy be to my... think that the missiles yeah. in there were were potentially aimed at you essentially like, <laughs> they, like they yeah, i don't know point. i don't know the range on the russian missiles of that area that were in latvia yeah. but like you know they yeah. were they were aimed at britain they were aimed at the west yeah and here I, you yeah, are drifting probably, over them they were probably aimed at Britain, and we we unified the world through drifting. Wow. So, you know, <laughs> really brought it together. But, yeah, but you know, um, you know, I don't know those yeah. damn Russians. I, 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 you know, <laughs> they're messing with the election. They're that's they're, right. You know, oh god, they're let's, creating let's, problems. Let's go about that uh, for know. an hour, right? Let's get <laughs> yeah. into a politics cast. You guys want to talk about some politics? You know, sure. those Russians. Those Russians uh, is a. Uh, Latvia is is actually awesome, and they they hate Russians uh, as much as, as anybody. Over well, they, there. Yeah, they're a former Soviet country that's now yeah. in, on their own, right? Exactly. They they were like, screw you guys, we're going to do this on our own. But uh, no, uh, beautiful country, super cool people, and you know, hopefully, a lot of your listeners know about Kristaps, but he oh, yeah. is a a badass and uh, is an badass. awesome drifter. Yeah, we talked is, to him for a second on our show with uh, the help of uh, Forsberg. He was staying with Forsberg, and and I, I think our fans got to experience a bit of his dry sense of humor because <laughs> half the time you're not sure that he understands what he's saying, but then you realize that he totally understands. He's just waiting yeah. for the right sarcastic mm-hmm. ass Latvian answer to give. And he's mostly yeah. no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're, he's you're, awesome. People don't get like it, the funny part is is he's probably the most outspoken lively latvian that's ever lived yeah <laughs> like you know when you go there you're like whoa what is going on with these people but they're very uh they're very you know quiet and and reserved but and um, dry no, and, yeah. yeah very dry no they're, they're awesome they're they're super they work their asses off they build nice. awesome cars they they uh they treated us really well they were were really hospitable hosts and um you know i think we, we want to make sure that we mention, you know, uh, Roby Works, which is the other production company mm-hmm. that we we collaborated with. So they set up the locations. They did uh, the original video with Chris Stops, the badass Latvian in the, yeah. the docks or whatever. And they are like the scrappiest, coolest dudes who uh, are about as <laughs> run and gun and, and as unorganized as as we are so together we made like this super crew but um i just saw their cut of their their video from that similar shoot is that out yet yeah i don't know i think it's coming out today if it isn't or if it is go check it out um the roby works it's called drift camp it's pretty hilarious yeah Um, that's really good it's different so like it was interesting you know working with another production company that we both knew that we were going to put out our own edits from it and we wanted to go weird and be like a music video and just you know, all over the place. Cause we, we weren't too focused on a story. We didn't even know what we were going to get. Um, the, the amount of time we had to film that stuff was very short. Uh, I don't think people even understand that, you know, like 90% of that video was shot in three hours. And, yeah. Uh, that's, that's crazy fact. Yeah. Learn, Cause it, usually it was, you would, you'd want a lot more time than that to shoot stunts, driving stunts. Yes, but. absolutely. But the drivers were on point. Um, and Roby works guys were on point and they were, they were fun. They, they were really good to work with. And actually, uh, we're going to bring them out on some more shoots. Um, what we have planned for Europe later this year. So, uh, we're going to bring them as our, our, uh, latvian secret weapons to uh, <laughs> nice. some of these shoots it's good because they get paid in latvian rubles so it's like <laughs> it's five dollars cheap for us. Shoot. yeah <laughs> no, <laughs> they, we'll you, pay them in dollars are you able to talk about one little quick let's let's move on but a little quick factoid there's a reason why there's not three bmws in that shoot right didn't something happen to one of the bmws <laughs> yeah it was supposed to be three bmws uh, no, 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 no. Actually, it wasn't. It was going to be. It was still going to be two BMWs and a 350. Oh, really? Matt, Matt was always in the 350. Okay. Uh, Turk was just supposed to be in another BMW that was nicer. Yeah. Um, oh. And it was like a yellow and white one that matched. Uh, that matched uh, the the E46. Which you see for a moment in the video, right? (laughs) You see it when that does the nose to nose burnout Uh and then immediately (laughs) broke after that. So uh, (laughs) that was first shot of the day and it ended up being, it been okay. He turked it, but it ended up being like a weird electrical thing that they ended up fixing the next day, but he didn't blow up the motor, but we thought that he did. And we were super bummed. And luckily we brought that yellow BMW as like a backup car. Uh, it ended up being driven by Chelsea Denofa, uh, later that weekend, but, uh, Turk, uh, ripped on it and luckily didn't Turk that, but, um, (laughs) 
But yeah, yeah it's you know, it's just like little things. Like we're in the middle of nowhere, car breaks, and we would have just been totally screwed. But luckily, they brought um, another car. Actually, this uh, yeah, this dude who is uh, was friends with Chris Stops just brought it, and then <laughs> yeah, so lucky break. It worked out. Nice. Out. Turk, Turk usually breaks something every place that we go yep. ever. Seems just, like it's just to uphold the reputation. Standard. And do you yeah. want to do you want to mention that little Easter egg that I noticed uh, during one of the cuts, or do you want to let people just find it on their own? Because there is an Easter uh, egg in there that is a Tyler Durden one one frame. There do want, is. Do you want to talk I'll about say, it? Or just do you want I, to say that. I'll say that it's near the linen head, and people should just yeah, find it. Let and people go find it. it. Yeah, and just understand that that's the way we feel about stuff. <laughs> just understand that's here's, the, that's here's, the way. Here's another five million views just for all yeah. the people who listen to the show. <laughs> yeah, all yeah. five million. You're yeah, welcome. So. You're welcome. Thanks. All right, a couple more. Uh, we'll, we'll bang out these questions. We don't need to go into super detail unless you really want to. Uh, Toga Party says, if you had to make an adult film, which form of the drift driver, and which one of the drift cast hosts would you pick? Hmm. I think I don't know. I don't know if you've seen any pictures of. Uh, Forsberg when he like has a full mustache yep. and nothing else porn stash. it's pretty porn stashy so I yep. think he would do well I think he dressed up as um, uh, Lieutenant Lieutenant uh, uh, what's his name Dang. Dangle no. yeah no Lieutenant from, Dangle from Super from Reno. No, no, yeah Reno sorry Reno yeah no. Reno 911 uh, and that looked pretty porny back then rollerblades so. and short shorts and all hopefully <laughs> Yeah, so I'd say I'd say Forsberg and then Paco because I feel like there's like always a lot of Latin guys in porn right. for some reason, huh. you know, and like I you know that. I think I guess I have I have a future. Yeah, I mean, if you use Sam, it would have to be like milf porn or something or d- <laughs> dilf porn. That's pretty funny. I, you know, the, I the salt need, and I, pepper hair. I might need a dong like double though, because you're yeah. a little. A little dinger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I do like Sam's other character. What was that character that you have, Sam? What uh, what is it? Kick flick. Kick. Oh, uh, <laughs> my name's Kick Flip. I'm a cool kid, and that was actually yeah. <laughs> that was actually born from Donut Media when you guys wanted to uh, have a younger, cooler guy to make your video. <laughs> so that was that was my character. It was Kick my name's Kick Flip. Kick Flick McRad. I'm rad. <laughs> and I'm yeah. rad. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was good. No, I think uh, probably Paco and, and Forsberg. I think that's a good wow. one. But we, we might – Thank you. Maybe we'll get into that. We did make a music video this year, which was totally random. Yeah. Maybe we could get into uh, a porn video. I, would, I, I, I have a couple rape vans. Whoa, yeah. easy, Paco. <laughs> Whoa, Jesus, it, Jesus, I mean, it, it, Paco. It, it, I guess it's okay now. We yeah, can, there's okay no, now. SJW, social justice stuff is done. We can say whatever we want on the show. <laughs> uh, let's just do one more so we can get you out of here. Uh, Iron Dookie, I imagine this interview will only last one to three minutes since that's how long all of your videos are. But seriously, how frustrating <laughs> is it to condense a day or sometimes a week of shooting in a three or four minute video? Would you guys prefer <laughs> longer cuts or is the attention span of the internet just too short? Yeah, uh, we get that a lot, but I think it's just from a small percentage of people who want our videos to be longer. Uh, we are feeding the ADD age, and uh, we want to keep it quick, and our videos are uh, really optimized to be shared. And I don't think that you can share um, – so, you know, people aren't apt to share longer-form content. So most of our stuff is between one minute and five minutes, and it's just the way it is. So take it or leave it and uh enjoy the couple minutes but no i think i think there is room for for longer content stuff um we actually are releasing which is going to be pretty interesting i think it comes out this thursday which is going to be called three days with a champion and it's going to be covering uh forsberg's irwindale so oh nice uh yeah it's going to be really cool it's a documentary uh that we did with a kid um that I am forgetting his name right now, which is totally a dick move. Um, <laughs> In drift uh, culture, that is considered a dick move. Yeah, no, I'm going to look it up right now just so I can give him his credit because he did a really awesome job. So he came he came to Chris and said, hey, I want to do... Yeah, a, I remember him uh, talking about that. Yeah, so like he said that he wanted to do a, you know, kind of a little mini documentary on him. Um, and... Uh, Let's see, where is it? But, uh, and, and so Chris just put him in touch with us and said, Hey, um, yeah. Oh yeah. It's Ron, Ron, Ron Howard. No, Ron, it was Ron Howard. It's going to be called, uh, 
yeah, Ron Perita visuals. And he's awesome. He is a really cool dude. And he, he wanted to cover Chris. So we said, Hey, let us support you. Uh, we'll put it out on donut together. And, uh, so he's, he did a bunch of interviews. He just, he followed Chris really closely and it was kind of an interesting, weird championship, you know, to win to, you know, Chris was in the lead and kind of had, you know, got in a wreck early, which is super un- uncharacteristic of, Tur- of Forsberg and, and very characteristic Vaughn of Vaughn got Turk. in a wreck and... Yeah, and, and, just, and then yeah, Osbo messed up and the it was whole, just crazy. The whole round and was then Matt Field decided the championship for everyone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we paid Matt Field a bunch of money before that, that yeah, of course. last round. And it was, it was killer. It was the best money nice. we ever spent. But... Um, <laughs> No, but it was just a, it was an interesting take. So we are putting out a 15 minute piece that covers Chris's Irwindale. That's really interesting. Oh, kind yeah. of gives you an inside look at, at behind the scenes of, of what he does with his team. And I thought it turned out really awesome. I've nice. seen a couple rough cuts, and I'm really stoked on it. So that's uh, that's coming. It's longer. Uh, jerk. What's his name? Iron <laughs> Dookie. Uh, yeah, that's he's one of our uh, long time, long time listeners, first time listeners on the show, and uh, yeah, he's he's a good guy. He's a big he's a big dookie. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So take us yeah. out of. Uh, let's send you off with real quick. Why can't you rent a car anymore? <laughs> with anyone, you can't rent. A, I just learned from Andy. You can't rent a car from anyone. It's not like they all they all shared the info with each other. They seem to be in cahoots with each other. So. Huh. I think right when Donut started, we made a little series called How Not To uh, with Turk. It was uh, doing a bunch of stupid shit in rental cars oh, that, <laughs> that somebody else rented. But I I guess my name was on the minivan that Turk used for how to how not to do burnouts in your mom's minivan. And uh, next time I was at like late, I was headed to a meeting. I just got off the airplane. I was like in a big rush and I got there and they said – you are on the do not rent list. And I was like, what, what the fuck? (laughs) And, uh, they turned the screen towards me and it said, customer has uploaded a video to YouTube doing a burnout in our vehicle. (laughs) Uh, it was real. It was typed there. It was totally legit. And the best part is that you didn't actually pull the van out and, and you weren't the one doing the burnout, but simply because your name was on the res, you just forever fucked by this. Like, is this forever? It was a total, no, it was a total screw job. And like, I think it was maybe enterprise, that we rented it at and then they share information with like dollar and budget or somebody. I don't know. They're all in cahoots yeah. <laughs> and they, I've tried to do it. And then I even like hit up some lady and then they like emailed me and then they said, uh, yeah, we reviewed your case and you're still banned indefinitely. <laughs> indefinitely. Uh, Jesus. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's actually really hurts my, that's, business, it. that's a fun uh, workaround for ability. someone that has to travel 200 days out of the year. Yeah. You can't yeah, a goddamn car. <laughs> it sucks. I leave all the rentals to, um, James Kirkham because he somehow gets Porsches every time we yeah. need a rental car. And, and, and that's Shelby what he uses. Yeah. yeah. And Shelby Mustangs. And, uh, so he gets all the sick cars cause he's like Hertz super gold or something. But, um, wow. Yeah, it was a screw job. It was another way that Turk constantly um, screws me. But um, yeah, uh, I don't know if you guys uh, caught the time when he stuck a knife through my arm, but yep, that was yep, uh, that was fun. That was Sam, a good time. Sam was Sam was there for that. I got off the airplane for Drift Garage season three, and uh, I, I heard that Jacob's in the hospital because uh, it's because tough. because. Uh, Turk just straight up blatantly stabbed Jacob with a box cutter. <laughs> or not a box cutter, it was a full on knife. <laughs> that was actually a full yeah, it was a, a, knife. It was a it was snap, snap on, on knife. knife. Yeah, yep. it was a good Thanks, snap, snap on knife. <laughs> Give some love out More to our homies snap on. at Snap On. In words that you have uh, taught me over the years, it was a real rat fuck. It was definitely a rat fuck that is uh, <laughs> constantly a scar to remind me. Hey. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I mean, uh, that was, that was fun. I think it's you guys are doing some cool stuff. I don't hear all the podcasts, but I get the highlights from <laughs> from Sam or Andy or That's somebody. That's all I talk about with him. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank yeah. you. Thank you for spending time. I'm sure hopefully our fans will uh, appreciate the info. Our audience, excuse me, Paco. Yeah. We'll appreciate the info that you've given. And uh, obviously we'll see all your cool shit to come. Awesome. We'll keep an eye out on it. We're going to be uh, dropping some more of those sweet, sweet vids for 15 you. 15 minute videos, mostly. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Have a good night. Thank you. Uh, all right. Thank hey, you. Guys. Later, man. Bye. 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 Well, it, it was not bad for, for an episode that we weren't going to talk about anything. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm just going to extend this. <laughs> 
note until I just call this guy right now because uh, I want to get right into this call. I'm not even going to let him call us. He was, he's dying to call us. I could feel it. Really? I could feel it. Let's see what happens about this. Hello? Oh, oh shit. Uh-oh. Yo, why'd you, number. why'd you stab Jacob, dog? It's the wrong number. Oh, shit. Well, I thought that this is Ryan Turk, the, the serial stabber. Of Jacob Agajanians everywhere. <laughs> is this, is that's who it is? That was last year. <laughs> that was, that last, was last year. That's how we just ended our call with uh, Jacob. Was uh, We were talking about how he can't rent a van anymore, or rent any cars anymore. Uh, and he said that that's just one long series of events of Turk ruining his life. And uh, His life? Yeah. <laughs> and then the previous one before that was, of course, when you... When I guess I guess no wonder, it was no wonder why his no wonder why I can't even get a call back from my manager, but he's on the uh, <laughs> maximum drift cast. Oh yeah, he was busy uh, talking shit on you. <laughs> make, make sure to listen tomorrow. You're gonna be yeah. able. There's all the evidence of all the shit talking. But yeah, we right. uh, we know you don't can't have a ton of time. Can't wait to use it against them. We know you don't have a ton of time, and you're eager to uh, get to your. Uh, you going to the opera tonight? You said I think. I was going to, but the uh, this interview is uh, running too really far. Sorry, yeah, it's a little bit later than night. we wanted. But we mainly. Uh, so I had to, I had to cut my dinner short <sighs> and uh, turn a Patriots game on instead. Fair enough. Well, I just wanted to. Uh, I figured it'd be a good uh, segue into talking <laughs> to you about the GT four five eight six because we were just talking a donut and uh, what it is to make sweet ass videos, and you obviously had some part of making those videos. What what exactly do you do here? I just uh, I just show up and then I say the words that they tell me to do mm-hmm. or tell me to say and, and then I it. say them and and then I don't know and then sometimes and then it just works some somehow. Well, Jacob actually gave you credit for uh, the foundation of the four five eight six concept. So you you essentially you drove the supercars in Canada and and you were like I need one of these. And I then, want and then, it. And then what happened? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I had a so I had the idea for a long time, and uh, I just didn't know what it would be, or you know what I mean. I don't know much about supercars. I didn't really care to look that much into them. Um, as far as like particular models and and all of that, I just knew, you know, what engine sounded cool. Um, it was more about that than anything else for me. In this case, and, it was um, the four five eight, and then. A- Jacob didn't confirm, but I think I think you said at one point that it's a challenge Stradale motor. Is it my, am I saying that right? It was a what? It's a challenge Stradale. It's not just the basic four five eight. It's the it's the fifteen horsepower extra one. It's a Stradale. Stradale. It's the, yeah, the, <laughs> it's the Italia. I thought. Oh, Italia. I to don't be even, honest, I don't even know, man. I don't even know. I, Italia is the actual name. Yeah, it's, it's the higher four five eight Italia. Okay. It's the higher. It's the higher of the of the two okay from what i understand how did you how did you get the motor uh so it came out of a erect 458 obviously it was actually perfect timing because when um when gum out greenlit the project that motor came up for sale within two weeks of Damn. um it trying to source it so we yeah <laughs> somebody else's uh, misfortune really helped us up <laughs> um so it's up in San Francisco. I guess somebody ran into a telephone pole with the short end of the story I got. <laughs> um, but obviously the motor was fine, and we were um, hot to trot on it, got our hands on it, and um, and that was it, man. Had the, the biggest piece of the puzzle already solved. Yeah. Can I ask what a uh, used Ferrari motor goes for these days? Well, I don't know about used or if it was just broken in because it only had 6,000 miles. Wow. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, it cost uh, it cost uh, right around forty thousand dollars. That's about what I was gonna guess. But... I, was th- I was thinking twenty, twenty. Yeah. So wow. we didn't we didn't have time. Uh, right. I mean, think about think about think about it this way: it's a high strung, uh, naturally aspirated V8 yep. that revs to the moon. Dual overhead cam. I mean, yeah. it's a. Uh, I guess, I mean, Ford just came out with one, too, but I'm not sure what the price tags on those are. Probably, like, what you're saying is 25 30 Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, for a high-strung one, that's, you know, yeah, made for, to... It, it, it does make sense. I mean, very low miles, and if it was a Stradale, yeah. It, or wow. Italia, in this case. It's just, uh, Stradale no, it, is a... Yeah. Is a, a Stradale is, like, the, the, the package. It would be, like, the oh, sportiest okay. of the uh, Italia. So, yeah, if it is, yeah, I mean, 
It, that's insane. So full disclosure, are you expecting this thing to take drift abuse? Like, like the tons of motors cannot take sideways G's for long periods of time. Are you, are you going to make a video with this thing and have it not break in the first shoot? <laughs> I don't I really hope so, dude. <laughs> yeah. The question uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, what, I don't know. What are we'll your see. plans it's for gonna it? Get re- yeah. It's going to get re dynoed and... Um, oh man, interception in the football game, guys. Intercepted. Oh. Sports, it back. sports, sports, Sorry. sports, sports. Welcome, welcome to Maximum uh. Football Cast. <laughs> Are you? So wait, hold on. Let's, this this Ferrari car is boring, and obviously no one cares about it. You, uh, you a Patriots <laughs> fan? Obviously, <laughs> New England, New Hampshire. I don't really know East Coast. Yeah, stuff. Like, cheating yeah. Patriots. I love them. Guys. Cheating Patriots. Yeah, how deflated are yeah. your tires? Did you take one from uh, take one from the NFL book when you when you run? You just deflate them. Deflate um, gauge or tires. They're not any more deflated than Chelsea Denofa's, All right. But he uses well, glue to keep his on. I gotta probably stop saying that shit. <laughs> <laughs> the glue gate. Yeah. Um. Uh, but no, for real. The, uh, so back yeah. on topic here, the yeah. Ferrari project. <laughs> so we're gonna test it uh, early or late next week. Um, it should have pretty much all the things that need to be done to it done at that time. It should be retuned with the, uh, butterfly valves all hooked up, um, on the intake manifold. So that should be making maximum power after this next dyno session. And, and then, you know, quarter balance alignment, do all the, uh, necessary other stuff, I guess. <laughs> I don't know what else is uh, yeah. left on the list. I haven't been. Did, I haven't been in the shop for a check-in in a couple of weeks. Did so. you guys have to get um, like a like a Ferrari specialist mechanic to work on that engine? We did not. No, well, oh. I mean the engine was already together and complete. We didn't have to tear into it at all. So. Oh, okay. So. Um, you know, we didn't really. Yeah, nice. we didn't really need a specialist to you know time anything uh, or do any uh, internal work okay. on that engine, which is nice. Just the uh, skilled mechanics at Huddy just knew how to put a Ferrari motor and an FRS in the front way and uh, make it work. <laughs> well, it's all, it's all trial and error, right? Right. right. But, so, uh, but those guys did a phenomenal job. Obviously, it wasn't something that happened overnight. It yeah. took, uh, actually, it didn't take nearly as long as it should have. So, well, you've got just under. Uh, just under six months or five months or so. But so it's got yeah. some really weird. But yeah, it was quick. You got some weird quirks though, because the intake plenums are going through the windshield. The exhaust is like backwards. Paco's itching to say something. Paco, yeah, so like, go ahead. And there's like oil bukake is happening. Yeah, oil bukake. People are just getting sprayed in the face with your oil, your hot oil. <laughs> yeah. So it's not My a it's not a conventional. Oil. It wasn't just a drop in. It's not like throwing in like a two J and an S fourteen. It took a lot more work than that. Of course not, man. It's just a typical engine swap scenario. I mean, something that hasn't been done before, but, you know, I mean, all the same rules apply as far as um, putting in an engine that isn't from the, the chassis that it came in. But a rear-mounted you know? motor to the front mount, that's a pretty big yeah. swap. Yeah. I mean, uh, I guess the biggest thing was really the, in- the damn intakes that everybody always talks about. Why don't yep. you just flip them around, man? <laughs> Why didn't you just flip them around, man? It wasn't an option, was it? Actually, I should. There, it was. <laughs> I'll tell you why. And it's, yeah, I'm gonna have to reference a photo that I was tagged in recently on Instagram. Okay. And it's a uh, G. It's a uh, <laughs> GT86, and I think it has some sort of V8 in it. And it has these disgusting-looking intake plenums going right through the front of the hood. And it looks absolutely horrendous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. So I don't know. I don't know where to find that again. I don't, maybe I'm still tagged in there or something. But um, it is. It is. It looks so terrible. I would. I would be crying. How fucked would you have been? Because you got a custom windshield, obviously. How fucked did you have been if, when you had your hood incident, which we brought up with Jacob, the hood incident before SEMA, if your hood flew off and cracked your windshield? Oh, we would have. We would have screwed for sure. <laughs> yeah, because would have been at SEMA with a cracked windshield. Because you, you, you have a custom shaped windshield to go around the intake plenums of this. This weird. Yeah, they had a custom. Motor. It's actually the OEM glass, and they just cut custom cut. Um, oh damn! Yeah, those notches in it. It's a super hard. Cut. I had assumed so, then, glass. Shit! I had assumed that it was uh, some uh, plexi. What do you? What do we call it again? Plexiglass. It was plexi. Yeah, Pol- I, I assumed that it was polycarbonate. Uh, that was some plastic glass. I didn't realize that it was actually real cut glass. <laughs> I actually helped the guy put it. Uh, put the windshield in, and there was these studs from the uh, tubing bender in the floor on the concrete floor to hold it in. 
And uh, it was, you know, the tubing bender wasn't wasn't installed at the time because they weren't building any cages. So I'm like, I have the suction cup in my hand, and we're like walking back from fitting it in, and I almost trip over one of the studs <laughs> in the concrete floor, and I almost Jesus. dropped the damn windshield all over the ground. I almost took the whole Ooh. damn project. I cannot wait until you're doing uh, some close tandem behind whoever dude, you're going to be driving I, with, I and just a, a rock chip is just going to come right at you. Program. I mean, you could. You know, whole, no, I know. Whole dude, program's it's going to happen. Cop, it's going to happen. I'm just hoping it lasts long enough for us to do what we need to do at, at the time. Right. And this, everything's not super pressured for perfection and all that crap. So, yeah. or even just to show up with something that looks clean enough for a show. Do you think you won SEMA? In your eyes, you won SEMA? Well, I didn't get any awards. I was going to say, like Forsberg really got anything, all the awards. But... Jacob, Jacob Forsberg claimed Forsberg that you... Forsberg got all the awards. <laughs> Jacob claimed that you guys won SEMA ahead of time, which I think view count, obviously you did, because Forsberg didn't really have a view, uh, a build video, because obviously Donut favors Turk, like a bunch of jerks. <laughs> <laughs> but but Forsberg won a bunch of uh, I just trophies. I had the cooler project at the time, all right? Now I don't have the cooler project, and Forsberg is going to be doing a bunch of sweet build stuff for his G. Yeah. Yeah. It goes both ways, all right? So I'm trying to... Hey. We're not trying to create uh, problems <laughs> where they're on the fire. I was going to say, Paco was trying to put fuel in the fire. Oh, it's me. It's, it, now it's me, right? Yeah, well, I wasn't trying to put fuel in the fire, Paco. Come on. They both have sweet-ass cars. Right? <laughs> yeah. they're both gonna, and they're both going to wreck them together. I, that's what's important. I, that's, that's what I want to see. I want to see you two doing like some kind of drift tandem. Well, Turk doesn't boat. have a vintage car, does he? Am I, am I brain farting? Because Forsberg has his old car. Well, that's Yeah, but I mean, they're both SEMA cars. So. No, no, but I'm saying that, that Turk needs a vintage car now. Because I think like Vaughn's got the RTRX. Uh, uh, right, right. I don't have an old car, dude, except for the 240. That's basically man, that's, that's already an antique. Pretty vintage so. at this point, having a 91. <laughs> what what year is your hatchback? I don't even know. 91, <laughs> 93. Who really cares? Was it? I thought it was all the same. Did I see the same damn car? Instagram video or some shit of yeah, one of your, was it on the your water? S13s underwater in your backyard or some shit? Well, it, it rained for like two days straight. There wasn't a swamp back there on, up until it rained for two days straight. And then I went back there and it was underwater. Just left uh, it there for a couple of days. Turk has uh, one. Uh, that's how Turk treats his one day two for swamp for probably about six hours worth of time. So hey man. the haters can that relax. Was, that was a one J car? And, yeah. Oh. Hey, so man. Ryan Turk's nice draining one. the swamp, dude. Yeah. Well. Reflects the <laughs> the direction yeah. where the whole thing is going. All right. Well, uh, uh, we all, I only told you. If anybody has ever driven a car outside of Arizona or Southern California, it rains everywhere else. Bullshit. And there's weather <laughs> conditions. So uh, yeah, I don't know. You know, about a little that. bit of water isn't really going to hurt the uh, vehicle too bad. Especially if it's already a stripped out drift herd. So you're you're pretty okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, right. it just looked very surreal on the video, but that's it. I mean, I only uh, I only told you that you'd have to. <laughs> talk for 10 minutes and we're already at 13 minutes uh i'll let you get back to your football game any any other cool shit you want to talk about oh, right here? Dude, I really mm. cut me sh- cut me off short dude, here, dude i'll talk to you all night oh, what no, do you no, got no, what do you got man if you if you're here to talk i, I just want to give you thing, I, I put all things dude i had i went to the gas station for dinner tonight so that i have really? more time to talk all to right you well then let's hit it for another two hours man I, i'm here for you i just want to make sure you know you can get away <laughs> clean if you want to right now I'm just going to hang up at some point and leave you hanging on a question. <laughs> Fair I enough. I will not tell you when that's going to happen. I forget what uh, what has been leaked and what, what is public. What's, uh, what's, what's going on for 2017 for you right now? I don't know yet. I mean, more pretty much the same stuff. Um, some new stuff that I'm not allowed to say yet yeah. because we want to have like an official, official announcement. Um, but pretty, you know, same car, um, same team. You know, the nameless boys are uh, hot on the case. Yeah, I want to talk ready to for uh, next season. Johnny Hoyo. He's, uh, he's going to be one of the tech dudes we should talk to in the next few yep. weeks here. But when you say, right same, when you say same car, same, same uh, are you talking about also same differential? Yeah. <laughs> Same but differential. That's, that seemed like that was kind of like the, your weakest link. Well, for this, two years now, season, you've had right? bullshit well, this is this is the biggest This is the biggest overlooked thing because everybody says differential, differential, differential. It actually was never the differential that was the problem. So what was it? It was actually the half shafts that were the problem the first four events in 2014. And then we had those fixed uh, with some custom 3M ones. So those were all good. 
And then the other problem on top of that was the rear aluminum cast cover uh, was breaking in between the studs, and it was really hard to see the crack. Um, so what happened in Atlanta this year was that the studs or the aluminum cover cracked and then the two studs pulled out of the back and saw some sweet fire then, uh, going I kept up the my, hill. I kept my foot in the gas and then a uh, rear end decided to pull itself all the way out of the subframe and onto the ground until, uh, until the drive shaft finally disconnected yeah. from it. Uh, yeah. I saw some big, uh, I have it on video in slow-mo. I don't think we ever released anything cause it looks like shit, but <laughs> I saw you going up the hill there. <laughs> was thought, it not in focus? No, it wasn't fun. No, I just mean it looks like shit as in it looked like you blew your motor or something crazy happened. Cause it wasn't like a backfire flame. It was a sparks on the ground. Something exploded underneath your car. <laughs> <for> <laughs> yeah. I think it was all, I think it was all like gear oil slanging everywhere. It's just wow. like eventually getting caught on fire from the anti-lag. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Uh, what? Uh, I don't even know. It was pretty nuts, though. I was really, I was really pissed. But yeah. <laughs> so you do, you're pretty much <laughs> pretty pissed all season. Are you gonna Are you gonna turn up? What's uh What's the anti lag situation this year? If you can talk about it, because you went from a big jump from 2015 well, to 2016. Well, I was gonna, before that, I was yeah. gonna say, so all that rear end issues all figured out. Everything's good to go. Yeah. So you know, from that point on, it made a you know went out of built steel. Um, and knock on wood, we haven't had any, uh, issues since then. Everything's been good. So, um, yeah. So hopefully that is, uh, no more of an, uh, of a Achilles heel for us. Sweet. Uh, as, as far as the anti-lag, I think, uh, it's going to be just more of the same. That, that system works so well that more better. I, um, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, more better. Mm -hmm. John from Nameless is always trying to push the limits and, uh, you know, make things a lot better and test and all that stuff but i think it works so good there's not really much changes that need to be made uh we started running nitrous at the end of the year in a bigger turbo the gary gtx 4294r so um, once we started kind of really getting into the suspension and getting a lot more grip out of the car we needed more power so we had to add some nitrous and uh, the i think the biggest thing we're going to do power wise is really dial in the nitrous control Mm -hmm. And make that kind of a progress a progressive system, so it's not doesn't you know come on and off like a yeah. switch. They're gonna have a multi stage, depending like tune for every gear and tune yeah. for throttle position and all that shit. Yep, yep, exactly. Dope. You're so smart, Sam. You're so smart. No, no, I just I just know how to repeat shit that I hear every now and then. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I just I just repeat it. Nice. Uh, but yeah, that's probably that's probably gonna be one of the biggest changes uh, or kind of dial-ins that we weren't able to do last year. New sponsors uh, or this new year, I should say. Something. We'll see. I mean, there's still a lot of stuff, um, you know, up in the air as far as um, a, a few different people. But did, did Black Magic uh, majority of all the did they take all your money away and give it to FD? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's a separate budget. Thankfully, yeah, thank God, yeah. Listen, Ryan, we've but we've no, really enjoyed that was, uh, we've really enjoyed 2016 with you, deal. Ryan. But uh, but we're gonna <laughs> give all your money to Formula Drift now. We're gonna spread it to all the other drivers. We, we we've given hey, Ryan it's all too good. much money. We built you this we built you this sweet car uh, with the Ferrari engine, but uh, you're out and Formula D's in. So uh, yep. see you later. Look, yep. you gave yep. us 21 million views. We were kind of hoping for 40. And uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> but but hey, here's a telephone number for Turtle Wax. Good, good yeah, luck. Yeah, good luck with Turtle Wax and Meguiar's. <laughs> We're, uh, I shouldn't. Jared's wife, I think, works for Meguiar's. What? How do you feel about Meguiar's, Turk? Uh, I don't know. I haven't really used any Meguiar's product in the, my, my more recent years. I'm trying to create a drama here because uh, Jared Deanna's wife works for Meguiar's. Turk is sponsored by Black Magic. You know, let's uh, let's, let's create some friction. Let's create some drama. Create some you know. <laughs> Well, I mean, dude, the drama was already set when Black Magic announced the uh, title sponsorship of the Formula Drift Series that Jared has to announce that. So Ooh. I think it's going to be extra. I didn't think about that. It's going to be a battle at home. I think it's going to be a little extra dramatic when uh, he has to wear a crew uniform <laughs> yeah. at Formula D that has Black Magic on it. He's going to be sleeping on the couch. Because as we all know, the brands we represent, they still carry on in our home lives. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So they like, be like, I can't believe you're coming in this house wearing that filth. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then, <laughs> then the kids are going to be divided. Little Parker Jet's going to have a Maguire shirt. Little Tyson Brav. He's this going to have a team, uh, team, team Black Magic. Yeah. And yeah. They're going to hit each other. Wow. Going to be really, really, we should, real upset. We should make a reality show out of this. 
The DeAndas living the, with the DeAndas, keeping up with the DeAndas, keeping up with the DeAndas. Sure, Ryan, what, <laughs> what, what do you think about it all? I just don't know what to say. Think about I, what? I, I totally expected to have you for ten minutes, and now that we got you for uh, however long you want, we are uh, totally unprepared. I don't know what the fuck to say. What other talking points? Do you guys have any other talking points? I don't know, or, man. Uh, what are you? Is the conversation going to get interesting? Or are we just going to keep oh, talking God, about man. the same Jesus. old drifting stuff? Jesus, well, I mean, it's, it is the same old drifting chowder. stuff. I don't know what uh what's uh what's 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 on your plate this next uh, month. What are you doing? You said you're 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 ringing out the the GT four five eight six. What else you got? Um, oh, oh, hold on. Let's 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 talk about. As I say, I just thought of I just thought of Baja. Before you answer that, because you got oh, stuff. That's right. Something. Let's before we go to the future. Let's talk about the past. You did Baja with Forsberg. What was that like? I did the Baja. Yeah, it was it was really intense. It was actually really scary. Uh, <laughs> Um, just kind of not knowing what was, gonna, you know, what to do or really everything, experience everything for the first time. And then when you go out and do your pre-running, um, and getting stuck out there or broke in the middle of absolutely nowhere, uh, and have like a very lack of, uh, communication and gets a little sketchy. So yeah. that was, uh, that was definitely the, uh, scariest part of that whole deal but uh overall just super exciting and just learned a lot we obviously we didn't finish the race unfortunately and neither did anybody else in our class <laughs> oh, wow. so, which is pretty insane right yeah pretty pretty crazy dude the the, what the thousand miles we only pre-ran about five not even 500 of it but the terrain was so it was just gnarly it was a super gnarly baja from what i understand even from what a lot of other people are saying that are veterans of of that race. It was just, it was just not, never did any kind of off-road stuff like that ever. Obviously just some younger hobbyist take a winter car out in the woods and beat the crap out of it kind of thing. But nothing like what we did even in that, uh, Valvoline truck. I was going to say that, so that it was cool. Uh-huh. But that truck was, I was going like... to say it was cool. It's a good experience, but the, yeah, the truck wasn't really up to the standards of, of the Baja race. So it's kind of like an unconventional, um, you know, we all build, tried wasn't it. I guess so. I mean, yeah, when you when you look back on it, having like a leaf sprung truck like that and, um, you know, a much older chassis with um, <clears throat> with all that stuff kind of just added on yeah. to it. It was just, um, <clears throat> yeah, it just wasn't, we didn't know. Nobody knew what it would, what it would need and what it would take because it was everybody's first time. Um, so we went in there, we had high hopes, and uh, yeah, it's just uh, one of those deals. The Baja is no joke, and you go in there assuming you're prepared, and you quickly find out that you're not. So we made it uh, 99 race miles before the thing finally retired fully. Wow. Um, but <laughs> yeah, it was a struggle. It, it was a long road to even get to that point, just pre-running and just learning so much and having uh, a lot of things break. And just a lot of things that we weren't prepared for. What uh, for if the it's two weeks that we're down there? If you go back in 2017, what would be the big things you would now know going into it? Um, well, if we're gonna, yeah, for 2017, if we're gonna run the same class, uh, the biggest thing would be to buy a brand new OEM pickup truck and just outfit it with nice suspension, like the longest travel that you can. Yeah. Uh, as far as the rule book lets you get a, you know, just, uh, and then just do all the other basic mods that you would need as far as safety. Um, and then just replacing bolts that would shear or break under some harsh driving conditions and, you know, so on and so forth. All just like pre-maintenance stuff. Yeah. And Ferrari powered. Ferrari powered. Truck. Sure. Why not? Yep. <laughs> yeah, Turk's just, power trophy truck. Turk's just got a ton of those motors laying around. You bought you bought like a six motor program for forty grand, right? There you forty grand. Uh, that's six motors, right? Do you want to win SEMA again? <laughs> so you think you would do the same class, or would you do something more or less competitive? Oh, we don't know. I don't know. I mean, it, it's, it's a long way out. Obviously, kind of up to yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all up to what we could get uh, support for. Yeah. Um, obviously Chris and I both want to do it again, even though we had a tough time down there, it was just, it was such a cool experience overall that we're definitely bit by the bug and I uh, want to go back. So we, uh, yeah, we're working it out. I think Valvoline still hasn't, you know, is still kind of invested into going back and doing it again in 2017. So I'm hoping that we get, we all get to, uh, get the band back together and do it all over again. Hell yeah, man. 
Uh, That's pretty cool. So future, I'm trying to just get rid of you, honestly. <laughs> I got I got work to do. Uh, just just whatever. Thank God, just, how the tables have turned now. I know, right? I'm just fucking <laughs> sick of you, dude. <laughs> what do you have to do, Sam? Uh, I I, got, I just got back from all my snap on jobs, so uh, you know, I, unlike you, where yeah, I, just, I saw your guys' sweet slider gram. Yeah, working at the factory and. Unlike you, where I just like get my cool snap-on stuff. knife and stab Jacob with it, and then I'm out. Like <laughs> I gotta, I gotta keep going. I gotta keep doing stuff, you know. Yeah, you gotta make your own knives and stab people, and they don't just send them to you. <laughs> That's right. That's absolutely correct. No. So what? Uh, you you, you say you're doing Ferrari <laughs> testing next week? What else do you got going on in the next month? Uh, yeah, I guess, uh, dude, I haven't driven in a while. That kind of sucks. <laughs> um, what about so- East Coast events? Why aren't you Why aren't you doing East Coast crap? Oh, uh, the last event of the year is on my girlfriend's birthday, so I can't go to that, unfortunately. Uh, I've always said I'm, your girlfriend. I'm leaving. I've already said she was a bitch. Well, then I'm leaving for a while, so it's like it wouldn't really be fair. I just got out of the um, Dude, Turk's girlfriend is uh, such a fucking... Ugh. <laughs> I just said I've always said your girlfriend Stop is a bitch. Uh, no, it's funny. She uh, she immediately I like I like your girlfriend a lot. She immediately called me out as a fucking asshole. <laughs> the first time. I don't know where she got it from. Maybe she I think she saw before like I even met her. I think she saw a driver on driver and she's like, oh, you're that asshole guy. Fuck you, man. I was like, oh, cool. Nice Thank to meet you, you too. <laughs> she's a she's a lively yeah. one. She'll get you for sure. Well, it's very nice of her to not let you drift uh, for the last event of the year. I'm sure that I'm sure that. It's as, all right. I really didn't want to. I really didn't want to have to work on any freaking cars to get them going because they did like a week's worth of work. Right. Anyways, so she she uh, she actually saved me from uh, a bunch of busted knuckles and being pissed off and swearing and working out in the cold. That's how I feel about this podcast every week is that <laughs> everyone's like uh, all the YouTube commenters like, hey, stop releasing this bullshit podcast and fix your own damn car, but. As long as I'm doing this podcast. Well, I mean, you haven't been here for like the past three podcasts anyway. So yeah, yeah, what's your been, excuse? Yeah. Fix that damn car, Sam. Well, I was just hoping that you would do it. Because then I could just film you I have, doing it. I have it. way too many other cars to fix. Yeah, Paco keeps buying cars. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we, <laughs> didn't, we didn't do any like fan questions for you this time. So I guess what I'm trying to say, Turk, is fuck off. <laughs> Already? Yeah, man. I don't know. Like our show's been going on forever now. We talked. Jacob used all our time, man. He's the one with all the info. Do what do you? Okay, so give us per, some perspective on Jacob. Uh, Jacob, Jacob, uh, what's what's he done for you? Nothing. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's not true, Jacob. Don't don't fire me. Uh, don't. Yeah. There you go. Well, let's 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 put it like this. Like we asked him, we asked Jacob about like what what would a uh, Amateur. Oh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> did he? So uh, he oh, did okay, it. I wonder if that's intentional. He 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 said he was gonna do it. I'm gonna ask him. <laughs> I just text him right now, just make sure. But I wanted to ask him like the the tips to. I was gonna say because he did say maybe he wanted. To, I, I'm guessing what happened is before he started talking about Jacob because Jacob is still his manager to some degree. Still yeah. still some brand stuff for him. He probably didn't want to talk shit about Jacob because we know that Jacob talks shit on Turk. These well, guys have been working f- with each other for for a decade now. They're like buddies, right? They're like well, they're bu- buds. Yeah, probably not a decade. Well, like six years, seven years. And I don't think he was gonna talk. I'm joking. Shit I'm joking about all this, but uh, <laughs> I'm gonna text him still and ask him if that was on purpose. Sam, right now he's just like ridden by guilt. <laughs> I know. I'm like, oh, he's laughing. All right, he sent me a laughy face. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Perfect timing. I would. I would, This this one's for you, Ryan Turk. Well played. Hey, Paco, with the applause. All right, yeah. So well we've played. had we've had some informative informative discussions. I hope that uh, the audience enjoys our time. It seems like they uh, they like the episodes where we don't talk to big dogs. So they might they might like or dislike this one. I'm not sure. We'll, well see. I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll see what the audience thinks. As as usual, Paco, you were cruelly interrupted before you could fully talk about your shit. Oh, that's right. Well, what uh, what what's going on with you? <laughs> Just wanted to. I mean, maybe the, for the people who's looking at the video version, you'll probably see that I'm wearing. Oh yeah, a, okay, move that mic. Cool shirt. That's a uh, Paco's Tofu Drift fan it's, little it's guy. It's actually it's Tofukyu. Yeah, as I was gonna say the name. The, the name. How do you spell that? Tofukyu. How do you spell F U? Tofu Kyu. Tofu Kyu. 
you. Yeah, Q. Okay. Yeah, it's Japanese for like badass. And you something. got in contact with a local artist um, yeah, that no, makes these cool. Uh, no, he's based in San Francisco. Okay. Uh, they're called Sumo Sumo Fish. They make super cool shirts um, and stickers and stuff like that. But they're all based on on actual like articles like 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 food or or cars or stuff like that with with the image of a either like a blowfish or a dragon or stuff like that so they they he makes super cool stuff and he makes it he makes this uh super cool shameless co- promo collaboration t-shirt shameless with promo. a little tofu drift he's drifting on a on his little uh tofu box and these shirts can be yours for only a hundred dollars right paco well it's, i think it's gonna be 1999 Nineteen hundred dollars. Nineteen ninety nine oh. dread. Okay, rubles. Um, yes, but this one's for you, Sam. Thanks, dude. Yeah, I'm gonna work on it when I don't, or I'm gonna wear it when I don't work on my car, oh. which is always, yeah, I please. guess, pretty uh-huh. much. So that means I'm always gonna wear it. Wear it with pride. Uh, what? Uh, but uh, I'll, yeah, I'll put a link, um, probably my social media, and maybe I'll plug it on Maximum Driftcast as well because yeah, I don't do care. Yeah, why not? Fuck it. <laughs> but uh, yep, uh, go check him out, Sumo Drift. Mm-hmm. A sumo, dr- <laughs> sumo, sumo fish. Dr- sumo fish. That's sumo drift. Sumo fish. And, and sumo drift. And future episodes, you are you going to be? Because obviously we don't want to try to skip weeks anymore. We're going to try to keep keep it rolling. Obviously holidays yes. coming up here. Are you going to be around? My I'm par- going to try my, to keep making them. My but. parents are visiting until New Year, so I might have to take a couple Mondays off. But I, I we already I already well me and the sh- the show yeah. took a couple. Well, here's an interesting Mondays off fact. Already, but have have we ever? Have, have Corey and I just done an episode without you? I don't remember. I've never missed. An You've never episode. missed an episode. That's fucking yep. nice because I've missed ten of them. Corey's missed probably like seven of About them. About the same, yeah. So uh, I might, might take I might take a couple. We might have a Paco list uh, vacation here, and I figured that there's gonna be one of these weekends that Corey can't do it either, maybe. And and for that week, I'm just gonna punish the fans. Oh. And I'm just gonna do like a, like a two hour long Sam cast where I'm just gonna interrupt myself. <laughs> yeah, just like do <laughs> just do random strings of thought and and bullshit and. I don't know. We'll see. I would, I would like, uh, I mean, yeah, uh, probably like 30 minutes of singing. You yeah, probably a lot of singing. Recorder you and Corey playing. did sing Nickelback and which I, I didn't get to address. That was, that was original material. What are you talking that about? That was unfortunate that you did that. <laughs> I, I wish you wouldn't have. We'll see if we can top that one of these days. I, it was, I wish, I wish I could find words for how, how bad it was. <laughs> it was, it was bad. Uh, thank you uh, for coming from you. That's a compliment. Yeah. I guess. I guess. <laughs> I guess that's the way the cookie crumbles. The, the cookie crumbles. Oh. I was gonna sing it, but then Corey's not here. It just feels Corey, wrong. Corey's usually your your. Duet. I know it feels wrong. That's fine. We're rambling. I uh, <laughs> hope you enjoyed the show. Check us out on the internet, YouTube version, Undrifted at YouTube, iTunes version. If you're listening to it on iTunes, uh, please also, play your FM. Google Music, yep. all the other places. And, but if you already made it this far, you already heard it. Yeah. And, and all we want you to do at this point is to uh, subscribe on iTunes and hopefully rate us as give well. Us a, give us a only a five star only, rating. Yeah, please. if you're gonna rate us five stars, please. And uh, if you don't do that, if you, if you do four, we'll block you. We'll block you. We'll spam you. We'll uh, have Russia hack we'll, you. We'll probably like shame. Um, I would say uh, like shame bully. You like we'll forget your information, make it public. Dox, we're gonna dox you. Yeah. I think that's a term that the kids Probably use, been right? Probably swat, swat you. We're gonna swat you. We're gonna dox you. Yeah. And so that's only it. only five stars, please. And uh, follow Sam at Drift, Drift Idiot you. on Instagram and Facebook. Follow Corey at Hot Dogs or Lex. Which fun fact, <laughs> Sam had no idea that Hot Dogs yeah, or Lex. Yeah, that's, that's a hashtag. People an do, actual thing. People do things that are you can't tell if it's Hot Dogs or Lex. Yep. So he's been saying it all this time and he just recently knew that it was thought, an actual I thing. I honestly <laughs> thought Corey was really smart and he made it up. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Corey on Street Standard and at Corey Hosford. In and Hosworth on Twitch apparently now. Yeah, or something like that. I'll, I'll make sure to... We'll, yeah. we'll send people the right way. And you're strolling at Tofu Drift Band and 2F Performance. Perfect. <coughs> shall, we, shall we have the sound effect carry us out? You ready? Sure, please go ahead. Shame. Shame on you, Sam. That was, that was way was too loud. loud. <laughs> Louis, quiet down. Shame. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. Shame. Rest in peace, headphone users. Rip. (laughs) Good night.